There we go. Recording started. Alright. So, you guys remember where we left off, yes? More or less? Nope. Alright. You were just uh, bundled up into the helicopter. And, uh... Oh, yeah. Alright, cool. Okay. So... So, everyone takes off a blood point during the day. And what are your guys' humanity ratings? I believe minus eight. Alright. Six. Okay. Five. Okay. So, Jonathan, you uh, wake up first. So... <laughs> You come to in a uh, very sort of opulent uh, bedroom, and uh, you're lying there on a four-poster bed. As you look around, there's pretty much all the regular things you'd find in a bedroom. Uh, there are no windows, however. Hmm. All right. Do I see anyone else in here? Um, you would do not. But there are there are uh, doors leading to other rooms as well. Right then. Uh, I suppose I'll try uh, entering one of those doors then. Okay. So you head up. Get up over one of the doors, and in the next room you find it's pretty much the same as the room you were in, um, almost down to pretty exact details. It looks almost kind of like a series of hotel rooms. Um, and then on this bed, however, you find Ryan. Hmm. Hello. Right, then I'll attempt to wake him up. All right. Yeah, so uh, you go over and kind of start gently nudging him awake. Ryan, what is... Your self control. Oh, come on. Four. Okay. Okay, thank God. Okay. It's a difficulty 10, though. Um, <laughs> it's not quite difficulty 10, but uh, this is about as new of an experience as he's had in poor a long Ryan. time. God, poor Ryan. So. You wake up, Ryan, and realize that you have absolutely no idea where you are. Ah, right. Uh, so you kind of start... So basically, Jonathan, you kind of shake him awake, and he looks up, and he is, like, basically wild-eyed. Uh, and he's kind of, like, looking back and forth, just looking almost for an escape route. Then he All right, I'll use a calming aura. Calming aura. All right. What is your uh, charisma plus uh, performance? That would be six. Calm down. Do not hurt me. <laughs> I, I have a specialty as well, into, I think. He breaks into late Miz. So you know, I'm making it so I have a specialty right now, because I didn't put a charisma specialty. All right. So what would I fly right now? Uh, calming aura. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Demands attention. How about that? Um, alright, so you start basically kind of like, oh, calm down, and then, like, a hand lashes out immediately and just grips you. Uh, Ryan, you kind of wake up, you see you're in a place you don't know, there's someone you don't know standing over you, and then it just, like, all becomes red. You just basically right. go unconscious. Um, right. Well, into frenzy. Oh, boy. Uh, so, yeah, you're trying to calm him down when he suddenly lashes out and grabs at you. Then, does he have eye contact? Um. Because if so, dread gaze. All right. So, let's see, what is what are the mechanics for dread gaze again? Steven is just sleeping peacefully in another room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I believe Dread Gaze is Charisma Intimidation, I want to say. Yeah, but what does he roll to resist it, also? Uh, that I don't know. 
Yeah. I don't recall. I didn't use it enough. Clearly. <laughs> well, it is probably the worst presence power. It's not like summon. Mm-hmm. Let's see. There's summon. And dread gaze. It's charisma plus intimidation. Difficulty of the victim's wits plus courage. All right, David, what's your wits plus courage? It is... Ace, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice. What is your charisma plus intimidation? Seven. He also gets a small bonus to this because he's in frenzy right now. <laughs> uh, nice. I got this. <laughs> You do oh, a member of party. All right. Your specialty, <laughs> screwing over the party. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, so you uh, try and look into his eyes, um, but he is—you really just don't find anything like there that's from his upper mind enough for you to make contact with. Essentially, he seems to basically just be like a wild animal at this point. Huh. Uh, David, what is your uh, strength plus brawl? It is, uh... Six. Okay. <sighs> and, Before uh, you ask, my stamina and my, my soak rider is two. <laughs> uh, he's actually trying to grapple you, so what is your strength plus brawl to resist that? Oh, don't even ask that, you know the answer. <laughs> Is it the classic? Yeah. Uh huh. Count it on one finger. It was a ten that you rolled. Beautiful. But you still got less successes. <laughs> oh, I have a specialty, actually. All right. <laughs> so, running away. Yeah. The so, joke is that I can't have a specialty, but I yeah. won. So he basically leaps up, grabs you, you both kind of go tumbling to the floor, and he has basically started holding you fast. You're pinned. Oh no. I then I'll yell out, wake up! <laughs> Alright. So, uh, I will give, um, Star Wars still isn't here, I will give, uh, Steven though a chance to wake up. What is your, um, humanity rating? Six. Six. Yeah, so you hear, like, yelling and fighting from the other room. <laughs> you hear weird thumps from the other room. Yeah. All right, well, um... Okay. I will go to investigate. Rubbing the sleep from my eyes. All right. So, yeah, you, uh... <laughs> Yeah, you know, kind of leisurely head into the next room. And, uh, yeah, you basically find the situation as it's been described so far. Ryan is in frenzy on top of Jonathan, who is yelling at him to wake up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, unfortunately, he's already in frenzy. <laughs> yes. So I don't know if I'm going to get through to him. Mm-hmm. Hmm. 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 But I suppose I need to try. So I will um, I will call out Ryan's name attempting to get to Ryan. Okay. Um, uh, Ryan, if you want to uh, spend a willpower point, I'll let you make another self-control roll to try and get a hold of yourself. So I will essentially be saying, Ryan, it's Ryan, Steven. Okay. Now that your best bud is here. Okay. Spence. Okay. Yeah, so uh, you are about to, basically, uh, you are uh, less than, like, a second from plunging your fangs into uh, Jonathan's neck uh, when you hear Stephen calling out. And this kind of brings you through the haze. You were just sort of in a red mist for a while, but then you hear the voice of Stephen calling to you, and you slowly begin to kind of come to your senses, and you basically find yourself throttling Jonathan on top of him. You mind maybe getting the fuck off me, mate? Oh, okay. 
<laughs> was that? Did was you just that? say that, or did you also actually get off him? Uh, I'll waste an awkward amount of time then get off him. Okay. <laughs> I will. Uh, I'll go over to Ryan and 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 put a calming hand on the shoulder. All right. So, in character, have we introduced our um, clans to each other? Um, I don't think you have. No. Uh, okay, in that case, I'll say. No, oh, I guess you're probably a Malkavian then, huh? <laughs> well, well, no, what makes you say that? Racist. To be fair. <laughs> Just a hunch. Just irrationally going into uh, frenzy is also sort of a bruja trait. So, well, frenzy in general is like a vampire thing. Yeah, bruja do it most often though. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. Good morning to you too. So, where is Derek? Just so we, I would obviously look yeah, you, for him. You basically find even him. Okay, so if he wakes up and we're all together, so what is the room situation? So we have connecting rooms, obviously, can we, are, is the doors to the hallway Yeah, there's, locked? in each room there's also a door into a, like, it looks probably like a hallway, but the doors are locked. Not too long after you all get together, though, a guy who looks like a chauffeur comes in, and he says, uh, ah. I see you've all awoke, and he kind of gives you a polite bow. Mm-hmm. So, why are we here? Uh, I am unsure of that exactly, but I have been given orders to uh, bring you to a meeting with uh, my master. He will be waiting for you very shortly if you would like to get dressed, and he kind of motions to uh, one of the dressers in the room that he's in. Some clothes Are we have been naked? Uh, prepared for you. No, but you're—I mean, you're in old clothes, and uh, obvious... foreign stale clothes. So he's a, he's allowing us to refresh. Yeah. We'll see when we take advantage of that. I shall freshen up. All right. I'll do the same if I can. Okay. Ryan. Sorry. Uh, you want to get some new clothes? I guess. He's probably been in the same clothes right. for like. No, 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 no. Ryan wouldn't. No, no. I'll a month that. and a half. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll just to be easy. I'll just say Derek does uh, get his new digs. All right. So, what kind of clothes do they have for me? Um, it's mostly just kind of nice clothes. Like it looks like a suit. They have. They don't have oh. dapper British tweed or anything. No, but um. He says that you guys are going out to dinner to meet with his master as soon as you're finished. So. Oh, I see. All right. So we know how to dress. I see. So what exactly, David? What exactly is Ryan wearing? Uh, so Ryan wears like cargo trousers, uh, some sort of shirt with at least a pocket, and a heavy coat with lots of pockets. Are they? Is it stained clothing? It's basically like all military surplus. <laughs> but I, I'm assuming it's rumpled because you've been in it forever, and I'm assuming it's stained. Well, I don't have to have only one set of clothes. It's just that Ryan wouldn't take clothes from someone else. Right, because they would be new and different. Yeah, but like I could, ha I could have the same set of clothes. It wouldn't have to be the same one outfit. You get true. You would yeah. just have the same outfit multiple multiple times. He's not disgusting. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Okay. I just, I just wanted to know, like, the regularity that Brian would change his clothes. Anyway. Okay. All right. Because he doesn't have any body odor because he's a vampire and he doesn't secrete any no. sweat. I think we're okay. All right. All right. So once you guys are finished, um, the chauffeur kind of nods to you and says, "If you'll please follow me." Mm-hmm. So he takes you basically through this place, which looks kind of like a luxury uh, state. Um, and he takes you out um, into the garage where there is a limousine waiting, and he gets in and basically drives you. Cool Imp is with us now. Ah. Welcome. <laughs> uh, you haven't missed too much. All right. Basically, uh, Ryan woke up, went into frenzy, and uh, now we're going to dinner.
Yeah, he tried to kill Jonathan. I should have let him. <laughs> Why? What have I done? Because then you could have made a new character, Miles. I like this one. Really? <laughs> you like this one. I know you all do. Somewhere deep down inside, right? Somewhere we, deep down inside. I love to hate him is the thing. He's, <laughs> he's like the perfect heel. There's literally nothing wrong with Jonathan. Okay. All right, we're moving well, on. We're going to be... <laughs> All right. <laughs> He's the most realistic character I've ever made. He is. That's true. <laughs> I'll just give it to you. All right. So the limo basically drives you through the city, and uh, you arrive at a restaurant. I'll look up the name here. So we were allowed to see McDonald's. <laughs> Are we blindfolded? Are we allowed no, to see allowed where to we're see. going? Yeah. So we knew where we were being held. Why the yeah. whole secret helicopter thing then? Um. So then we get in the car and then I know exactly where we are? No, it wasn't to keep the location a secret. It was to make sure that you weren't bringing any weapons in. Basically, you fell asleep um, during the day. They searched you. I they made sure you had person. nothing. Oh, I got yeah. it. Okay. okay. They made sure no one was following you. That was the reason. Oh, okay. All right. That makes more sense. All right. So you pull up outside Daly's, which is actually right next to a burnt-down brewery. Um, that location is only significant <laughs> to one of you. <laughs> hmm. Sweats profusely. <laughs> All right, and I'm going to actually remember to switch scenes. I would whistle if I could. <laughs> All right. So you are brought in, and the maitre d' uh, greets you guys, and he kind of looks at Ryan. He kind of says, all right, you know, we've got your reserve table, and then he looks over at Ryan, he's like, um, would you care for a, a jacket or a tie, sir? Um, can I uh, interrupt, interrupt and say um, he's? It's best if we just leave him as he is. All right. What is your uh, charisma plus etiquette? Uh, that's a one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Shall I friendly. ask? Shall I ask? Yeah. Why don't you ask? Charisma plus etiquette is some beautiful round eight. Holy shit! Someone's really polite. There we yeah. go. <laughs> and like, no. And Jonathan's like, well, let me explain. <laughs> we really don't want him going into frenzy here. Yeah, so he he nods and he says, um, well, I, I suppose that's fine. Um, follow me. Thank you for understanding. He takes you into a room with an enormously fat man. Um, he looks, he basically, he kind of looks like the kingpin from Daredevil. Um, except that the kingpin is all muscle, and this guy isn't. He's just flab. So he's more like Jabba. Yeah, he's more like Jabba the Hutt, yes. Mm. Um, so he is sitting there, and he has basically got an entire platter of food in front of him. Mm-hmm. That he is just, like, just laying into, essentially. Like, absolutely destroying Interesting. So, when he sees you guys, he motions for the maitre d', brings you guys over, he has chairs set out for each of you. Um, fortunately, the table is already big enough for all of you on account of how much food he had in front of him. Oh god, I just saw the picture. I feel so. like this is like some sort of Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Where does the Daddy neck is... end and the stomach begin? There is no way to know, and as soon as you guys sit down, he says, Please, please, eat! Hmm. Hmm. Um. I'll take a small portion. All right. Yes, as will I, just to be polite. Okay. So, as you guys are kind of sitting down and getting ready, um, he, you know, he looks at each of you and seems to be basically waiting for you guys to take a bite. Which I can do. All right. Uh, am I there? Yes. You're there. You're absolutely not eat anything. No, of course you won't. Right. Which is probably... I'll, look, I'll look around, like, impressed, and I'll compliment the area. This is quite a beautiful locale you've picked out for us. 
Yes, it's one of my favorite restaurants. And he just keeps staring basically directly at you and directly at Ryan. Ah, but how rude of me. I haven't introduced myself. I am Jonathan Weiss of Clan Toreador. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, sir. Says I already know who you are. Ah, of course. I should have assumed as much. My apologies. So, he kind of basically... He looks over Ryan and he says, Ah, but you're so thin, boy. And he basically serves up a plate for you and pushes it in front of you, Ryan. And then he leans forward and says, Let's consider the masquerade, shall we? What does he mean by that? He means that your guys are in a restaurant, so uh, he, he expects you, you to, to eat. You need to pretend like you're eating. So here is what you can do. Can Stephen lean over and whisper? All right. So, here I would suggest it's going to be hard for you because it's new food, probably too. Mm -hmm. But if you can take a bite, chew, and then wipe your mouth and spit it out in the napkin because you guys are going to vomit if you eat food. Basically, the mechanics behind this is if you want to try and eat food, it requires you to spend a willpower point. Um, you can spit it out, or you can swallow it. If you swallow it, you can hold it down for, you know, an hour or so, and then you will have to go and vomit it up. Right, uh, is he, like, looking directly at Ryan while he's saying all this? Um, he also glances over towards you as well. Right, well, if I ever catch him, like, staring, focusing on Ryan, I'll sort of cut into my food, but not actually eat, just make it look like I've eaten it if I can. Okay. I assume we have knife and fork, of course. Yeah, obviously, you're not well, savages. Well, it's froths, we just put our face in. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past this guy. <laughs> it's essentially what he's got. Yeah. All right. So, uh, let's see. So, Ryan, what are you doing? Well, I've only said it like three times. Yeah, I missed it, though. Yeah, I was going to say I didn't hear it all. Okay, so first, I'm obviously not going to look at him because that's retarded. Yeah. He's too hot. He's too so, get embarrassed. So, I'm staring down at the table. Mm -hmm. And I would try to stand up and say, excuse me, I need to go to the bathroom. Okay. So, yeah, you uh, can scurry away from the table if you like. He doesn't stop you. Do you actually... Ha, you nice. actually Suckers! Uh, do you actually go into the bathroom? Yep. Alright. <laughs> I'll try to sort of uh, apologize on his behalf. I just look worried. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you actually uh, should be. <laughs> um, I'm I'm very worried. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my body language. Okay, I'll just assume <laughs> that uh, Derek spends the willpower point to eat politely and not offend the elder vampire. Yes, of course. <laughs> All right. So. He says, I suppose you're, uh, wondering where the prince is. Quite so, yes. Kind of looks at you and then looks over at you, Stephen. Kind of watches your body language, sees if you say anything. We have seemed to have been given the runaround. He kind of nods and says, yes. Very fine acting. I might have even believed you if I didn't already know the truth. Oh, the please truth. do go on. <laughs> uh, I shall go along with your charade for the moment. As I believe we all already know, the prince is missing. Ah. Right then, I'll pretend to be shocked. <laughs> All right. What is your um, manipulation plus subterfuge? Two. 
Can I use performance instead? Uh, no, because you're not acting on a stage, really. It's. Well, I am acting. You are acting, but it's not the same. It's more of a subterfuge. You're lying more than in performing. So yeah, he kind of nods and says, Ah, yes, I can see you're very surprised. Oh, uh, horribly so. <laughs> Okay, now I'm still wondering who sent the note that got us here in the first place if this guy's been missing. He, uh, basically says... I don't say that, say uh -huh. that to him, but I'm thinking to myself. Why don't you say it? Do you want me to? Uh, well, he clearly, I mean, like, it's, uh, it sounds like he... He's blaming us for the disappearance of Logan. It sounds like... He thinks we're guilty of something else, or he's got some sort of misconception about us. It might help to clear up if we tell him the actual truth. All right, I can go for it. All right. I'm going to look exasperated because I am, and I'm going to say Annabelle Triabel came to Gary, informed us that Loden wished to meet. I will gesture toward Derek Williams. Derek Williams, we brought him here in good faith, to do as we were asked, I would like to see the prince, I would like to present Derek, and I would like to go home. Wow. All right. <laughs> Steven grew some balls. <laughs> I have five balls of courage, yes. All right. Give me a second before I, I, go try, home. Well, I craft my uh, <laughs> response to that. I got some behind-the-scenes stuff I'm in the midst of right now. All right. So I'll let you guys just consider how <laughs> fucked you are now because of what Steven just did. Egged on by Ryan. Calming aura. Calming um, aura. If you can multitask, would I be able to just ask you quick, like, did we wake up with our weapons taken and all that? Oh, yeah, your weapons are absolutely gone. I didn't even gone. bring my weapons, because I knew what was going to happen. I didn't even most bring of you, my Yeah, most of you decided you wanted to give your weapons to Terry, because you assumed they would be taken away. <laughs> did I do that? I don't remember um, if I if did or not. If you want to have, you can decide what you want to. That would be a good thing for you guys to do, is decide what you want to have gotten rid of um, while I fix this. I, mean, I have no weapons at all, so it's no issue for me either way. Uh, I suppose in character, I don't think Ryan would have liked to give up his stuff, even if they were they were just going to get taken or whatever. But at the same time, Stephen probably would have been able to convince him to hand them in. So I guess we'll say Ryan handed over his weapons and like his, you know, his uh, various yeah, and I, I, equ I equipment. I probably did not bring the letter from Odius. Because I just don't think. Oh well, that's kind of bad, isn't it? Since we, if we, if we want to convince him of the truth, we kind of should. Right, but if he letter. thinks we're working for Modius, I don't know that it would help us any. To. Could be good or bad. Depends on what he thinks of Modius. Yeah, exactly. Because if he thinks we're Modius's agents, and that we, you know, because yeah, but if Modius is infamously, uh, you know, shit, then. You would see no trash on us. Well, you know. I would rather I would rather get Annabelle's testimony that yes, she did go to Gary and inform that we had to do this. That's what I'd rather have. Well, yeah, not if we could get that, that would be just ideal, wouldn't it? Yeah. Which is why that's not going to happen. I know that's never going to happen, or she's going to deny that she ever went there, or something. All right. So, um, basically what I was doing was I was setting up, uh, the Discord, uh, for Kulim, because you might remember a little while ago I said we were gonna try and set up a guest hosting thing, or a guest mm -hmm. starring thing. Right. Um, so yeah, he is in the Discord <laughs> so now. So Kulim's gonna now kill me? Is yeah, that basically. That is... <laughs> okay. Um, basically the setup is there are gonna be some flashbacks in a little bit, and I actually forgot to send the file earlier, so... Are you there? Are you in the Discord? I'm here. All right, we got him here. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. I I hear you're gonna kill me. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. 
So actually, it's a good thing you did this, because I completely forgot to send the flashback characters to everyone else as well. So I need to find them. I think they're on my flash drive. Flashback files on flash drive? Yeah. Ooh. Meta. Is this it? Acrobat? Yep. Alright. Well, I'm definitely going to be editing basically just all of this out of the recording. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Probably a good idea. So don't worry about your, that, guys. Your technical difficulty slide. Yeah, let me pull that up. A lot more effort than I do. <laughs> yeah, I have one tech difficulty slide. And there's a uh, hot Jonathan. Yeah, number one fuck up. <laughs> Alright, so this is around the part where the future me is going to edit this back in. Um, okay. If everyone, ju if you were watching this on YouTube and you just heard all of that, obviously I fucked up. Alright. So yeah, it will be a, probably a little bit until we get to the first flashback. But cool. If you have anything, you know, if you have color commentary or something like that, you want to throw in, go for it. All right. All right. Let's see. We're back to Fat Boy. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> all right. So we pick back up with you guys all dead. Um, all right. Yeah, pretty much. Ballard just sits on us. All right. He all realizes this one by one. So as you are basically yelling about wanting to find the prince, he kind of watches you. And it seems like he's going to say something. And then he just starts kind of clapping. And he says, oh, Bravo. Very impressive. Unfortunately, I already know the truth. Let me paint you another picture of why you're here. Modius has been on hostile terms with Loden and Chicago for decades. This, See, this is why I didn't bring the letter. <laughs> this everyone knows. You are known to be residents in Gary. It's so odd that neonates sent from Gary just happened to arrive in Chicago the very night after the prince has been abducted. Are you putting together a new picture now? I would suggest that you speak with Annabelle Triabel to see if she did indeed go to Gary to request our presence. But of course, as you certainly know, Modius is the child of Annabelle. Am I to seriously believe that that Toreador woman, and he kind of says it very derisively and gives sort of a, a side-eye look over at uh, Jonathan. I smile. <laughs> <laughs> when confronted with racism, <laughs> just be polite. Uh, are we seriously to believe that she would not uh, lie in order to defend her child? Why, we would never do such a thing. Why would she lie? To... This makes no sense. Oh, I think it makes a great deal of sense. Uh, well then, let's hear your logic, please. Do go on. Alright, he kind of stops to... Uh you know, take some more food in. And he once again kind of looks up at the two of you as though he's expecting you to continue to eat as well. Oh, I'm much too excited to eat right now. Please go on. All right. Man, you're just winning points all over the place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. So, um, as he finishes... Oh, by the way, Orion, are you still in the bathroom? Yeah. I lock myself in a stall and turn on obfuscate. Okay. Uh, you know, one of those two things alone would have been enough, I think. <laughs> Don't need to do both. Says you. All right. Man, it's a good thing Steven's here to hold this together. Oh, God, about... <laughs> More like oh, this whole thing is about to break apart. Yeah. Yes. All right. 
Well, at this, um, he you kind of see someone else come into the room, and it's actually Neely who comes by and sits down nearby. And he says, you know, how is your meeting progressing? And Ballard nods at him and then says, they have not yet confessed. They claim that they are merely here to present a neonate to Prince Loden, and this is all happenstance. And uh, then Neely kind of nods and says, I've just come from a meeting of the uh, Primogen. Uh, until Loden has been recovered, they are willing to grant uh, the emergency powers you requested. And uh, Ballard says, well, in that case, there is nothing more for us to discuss, I believe. This he directs towards the two of you, and uh, he kind of makes a motion, and you can see near the back of the room, there is, you hear the jangling of spurs. And uh, you see that the sheriff is also kind of basically looming in the back of this restaurant watching you. But I have no idea who this person is. Neither Derek nor I. We've never seen him before. Um, so am I going to tell you you would like for us to leave? Oh, we're in the helicopter? Yes. Oh, okay. I ask him that. What did you ask? So I might have taken you want us to leave now. You will be leaving permanently, I'm afraid. We cannot allow those who have uh, attacked our prince in this matter to go unpunished. At this, Neely kind of steps forward and says, perhaps we shouldn't be too hasty. If they truly did not have anything to do with Loden's disappearance, as they claim, and he kind of looks over towards the two of you, Mm -hmm. then perhaps uh, they could help in his recovery to prove their innocence. <laughs> so he kind of, they kind of look over expectantly at the two of you to see what you guys think of this suggestion. Well, it's certainly preferable to the alternative. It is preferable to the alternative. Oh, I say that in character. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Neely nods and says, well, then if it's agreeable to the two of you, to your coterie, and to uh, you, sir, he kind of turns to Ballard, kind of sits back and then nods. Neely then kind of claps his hands together and says, well, that should be no problem then. You will uh, have 24 hours to uh, see what you find, and then you can report back to us, and we will see whether it is grounds for your continued existence or not. I'm going to assume they took have my Have you phone. any leads we may go on? No, but we can give you access to the Prince's Haven from which he was abducted. <laughs> Very well, then. I believe that should be a starting point, I suppose. All right. Ballard says, of course, there is one other thing. You could easily oh, of course. use this opportunity to attempt to escape from Chicago's justice. To make easily? Sure Why? Are you somehow not confident in your sheriff's abilities to keep us under control? I am fully confident. That is why he will be accompanying you. Hmm. And then you hear the jangling of spurs as it comes up behind you, and then a heavy hand is placed on your shoulder, Jonathan. And the sheriff leans forward and says, Boy, I think you and I are going to get on just fine. Uh, but aren't we all ready? Oh. And then he kind of looks around and says, Where's that boy? And he seems to be looking around for Ryan. Should we tell him? Someone just got. I'm, assu I'm assuming they took my phone. Um, like, do we have phones? 
they probably, they did take your phone, but if you have any, like, anything that could have been used to maybe, like, for things like phones, or if you have anything that might have been able to conceal something, um, they have them basically there at the restaurant to return to you. Oh, okay. So they took most like... of your, they took, like, jewelry, stuff like that, especially from a Tremere, obviously. Um, but okay. all of that is, uh, returned to you here at the restaurant. Okay. So I, so I have them back. Yes. All right. So I will just simply get up and say, well, we should best get started and I will collect Ryan and we'll just get going. I'm not going to, I'm not going to play with these stupid Ventrue. They, they, <laughs> I can see one of just likes them. All right. I noticed that your opinions on the Ventrue very wildly based on whether or not you are playing a Ventrue at the current time. <laughs> whether I am a Ventrue or whether I'm not a Ventrue, yes. They do You're very like well. Player? Yeah. Isn't that every... Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> all right. Every player for every uh, clan. Every clan, yeah. Uh, everyone much. always likes Malkavians all the time. No. Oh, yeah, obviously. All right. Affirm no one, that one. <laughs> all right. It's just you. So yeah, you're able to collect Ryan from the bathroom unless Ryan wants to resist you for some reason. I'm not going. <laughs> yes, I will go along. All right. So you guys want to go to the share, uh, to, or rather, to the Prince's Haven first? Uh, so that's like our only lead, so I guess yes. <laughs> All right. So the sheriff has a uh, vehicle outside for himself and for you guys. It's basically a big van uh, with tinted windows. He's basically got oh. a rapist van. Um, oh, God. Just so is it just him or is it anyone else as well? Uh, yes, he's also got a ghoul who is driving it. Oh. I put on my best British beneath me this is all beneath me sort of attitude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, I'll ask uh, the sheriff, just him, not so the ghoul can hear it. I'll just ask him sort of quietly. So why is a guy like you taking orders from a man like Ballard? He kind of looks over at you and why don't you give me uh, another sort of manipulation plus subterfuge? Why those? Um, well... It seems like you're kind of uh, maybe attempting to lure him into uh, some sort of treason against his superior. No, I'm really just asking him. No, oh, you're honestly asking him? All right. Well, in that case, he just kind of looks over at you, and uh, he seems to make kind of the same assumption that I make, uh, and he just kind of is like, nice try, pretty boy. Get in the van. I will, but I still would like a response. All right, and as you get up into the van, he kind of, like, slaps your ass and uh, gets in after you. Sir, I'm flattered, but I'm afraid <laughs> I don't swing that way. <laughs> All right. Oh, dear God above, I'm never coming into Chicago again. So this is where we'll switch over to our flashback characters. That's where you went, oh. <laughs> yes, with the ass slap. How beautiful. Oh, my God. He does have appearance five. That's true. But the, the prop yeah, is quite beautiful. You could... Well, obviously the sheriff is willing. <laughs> All right. So, um, since we're heading over into flashback characters, hopefully I edited out the part where we chose them. Basically, uh, this adventure contains a little uh, flashback sequence with ghoul characters set in, like, the 19th, the early 70s. And they these scenes will be interspersed with the main game. And that's why we have Cool Imp here, guest starring. Maybe. I'm still here. All right. oh. <laughs> that was sort of a... That was sort of a, hello, guys, I'm here, sort of introducing yourself. <coughs> Yeah, very <laughs> much a what? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. So why don't sorry, we over... switch... sorry, switched over to push to talk. That way I didn't accidentally interrupt. Yeah, all right. So when we introduce our flashback characters here, we can uh, start with Rourke. You can either just kind of read out the notes or just kind of give your sort of summary of what your guy is. All right, so apparently Rourke is a giant of a man as he stands 6'5". His body is lanky, but his movements are athletic and well-coordinated. 
His brown hair is nicely trimmed, and Rourke generally makes an effort to appear well-dressed. So that's Rourke. All right. I guess he's a businessman and still regrowing Chicago. Okay. Let's move over to uh, Natasha. <clears throat> Hello, I'm going to be playing Natasha. She's a slender five foot seven, and the word used to describe her most often would be fit. She has short shoulder length, simply cut blonde hair that frames her face, and she's done a little bit of this and that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> don't don't ask her about the FBI. That's that that's something else. All right. <laughs> And let's see, we have uh, Amber is Stalwart's character, and he is not here. So let's do Derek. All right, then. Derek is six foot five of Italian heritage, thinks he looks amazing in his God's gifts to women, quite clearly is not actually. He is a massive daredevil, a risk taker, and he is madly in love with Natasha. <laughs> All right. Oh boy, sorry, I, I, sorry I, sh I should say he lusts after Natasha. Ah. It doesn't mention love. <laughs> and hate her for her aloofness. Wow. <laughs> All right. Okie dokie. And then. Julian Curry, the only man with a last name. Well, Julian. Derek Gellin. Julian is yeah. this guy. Yeah. He's like a businessman and he licks Loden's arse. <laughs> All right. Mighty. I think we all he kind of hates the two young ones. He doesn't like uh, what's their face, Amber. Amber. Yeah. yeah, that's the one. And Derek, he hates Amber and Derek. So pretty much everyone here dislikes Derek. 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 Yeah. So okay, good to know. Well, he is kind of a dickhead. Did that's you true. read his description? Yeah, he's <laughs> nice. A lot of in empty bravado. Yeah, exactly. All right. So yeah, Derek's cool. We open up inside of the Prince's Haven, and I can give you a quick description of it. Alright. So, there is uh, basically an, enter an entry chamber, uh, which is just kind of a like an opening foyer kind of area. Uh, a dining room, where you guys can eat. A kitchen. A library. Uh, a, uh, basically, all of you, all of you apparently sleep in the same room according to this description. Uh, it just says retainer's room, a bedroom and living area for Loden's current retainers. Really? I gotta sleep with these yahoos? This area is spacious enough to comfortably accommodate six grown men. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Look, alright, you know. <laughs> Your player has cool ghouls get their own rooms, but not Lovens, all right? So there's also a uh, office, which is Lovens' personal office. Uh, there is a security room, which has uh, cameras for the entire building. There is a games room as well, which is outfitted with uh, modern entertainment equipment. Uh, including a arcade games, a pool table, and satellite connected television, and garish decorations with beer and plane posters stuck haphazardly on the wall. All and right. then in the center of it all, there is a giant vault, which is where Loden sleeps. And uh, mm -hmm. this is located actually on one of the top floors of the Sears Tower or the Willis Tower as it is currently called. So yeah, you guys are basically just hanging out in the Haven. What is it that your guys... What is it that you would be doing as you're just kind of relaxing here? Checking equipment, making sure it's all clean. All right. Uh, if there's nothing to do, I'd probably just be watching TV. Okay. I might have some papers to be looking at since I'm the finances guy. All right, getting ready to burn them in case the cops show up. Oh yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, you betcha. <laughs> in case. I am. I am managing and making sure everybody's doing what they're doing. All right. <laughs> Good job watching porn, Derek. Keep it up. 
Thanks, boss. Yeah, you know what? As long as he is not causing trouble, that is fine. <laughs> All right. Now, of course, you realize he just jinxed us. Yeah. Okay. Let's find my notebook. All right. So, yeah, you guys are just kind of hanging out, relaxing. And, uh, relaxing all cool. Yeah. When there is a, uh, basically a buzzer comes in on the, uh, from the, the front desk of the building. All right, I'll go respond. All right. No, you will not. <laughs> I will go respond. Derek leaps up, and everyone else in the building is, no! <laughs> and Rourke gives him a glare, and then goes to respond. <laughs> well, they'll have to beat me to it. <laughs> Natasha will trip uh, Derek as he gets up. All right. <laughs> like a well-oiled machine, everyone in the party moves to subdue Derek. <laughs> and more calmly goes to the buzzer. Well, as I get up, I'll comment. Why, well, if you want me to stay, you could have just said so, baby. Uh, she'll point the gun at him now. <laughs> yeah, wow. This is escalating Right fast. at the nuts. Point it at Duh, the nuts. Ah, playing hard to get. I see. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the the ring up comes from below, and uh, it is Herman, the doorman of the building. Uh, so, yeah, Herman, what's going on? He says there is a large package here in the lobby, um, but the delivery man uh, is requesting a signature for the package. <sighs> if you could I... send someone down from your organization. I see. Well, I would like to investigate this package before we bring it up here, so I will it go is down. It a um, very large package, he says. I see. It may be difficult to bring it up. Mm-hmm. So, let mm, me... If only you had it. someone who could help you. So, I will uh, ask Julian to come help me. <laughs> <laughs> Right away. All right. Trusting Natasha to be able to keep Derek in line. Yeah, while it's I'm all right. Gone. She's got her gun trained on him right now. So. <laughs> I, like that. I respect Natasha's abilities. So is the last character actually in the room? Um. Yes, she is there. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> sit back. Sit back down and go back to being the pig you are. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is an assertive woman. I like her. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Julia... Someone described her as assertive. <laughs> yeah. The word bitch gets thrown around sometimes, but you know, that's just a, a side effect of them not respecting a good woman. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So the two of you who head down. Um, find that there is basically a delivery man who is there. He's basically kind of arguing. He wants to get out of here, basically. He's arguing with the doorman, like, just sign for it, man, for God's sake. No one looks at the signatures here. It doesn't matter. I don't know why we ask for signatures, because it could just be some homeless guy outside the building, and I'll go back to FedEx, and they'll take it. It doesn't matter. So why aren't you signing it yourself, then, if it doesn't matter? And then the doorman is just like, mm, uh, I, I don't feel comfortable, sir. And this is when the two of you uh, come in. So I will stride with authority over to the delivery man, take his signature pad, and sign. Okay. So, uh, yeah, and you can see that this is actually, it is a huge package. It's basically the size of, like pretty much like a bed, basically, if you put it inside of, like, a wooden crate. Like, that's how big this thing is. Hmm. Now, where is Loden? Um, he is... This is early evening. He is still asleep. Okay. And I will look at Frankie. Or, no, Frankie. Frankie's my <laughs> other guy. Sorry. So sorry. I will look at Julian. <laughs> um, and, uh... And I will say, were we expecting a package? Since he's the finance guy. And, uh, yeah, so, Julian, you know you absolutely were not expecting a package. Okay. 
Okay. Um, so who is this from? I'm looking for the address label. All right. Um, yeah, so as you kind of leaf through the papers... I think these characters actually have the bureaucracy skill, so why don't you give me a perception plus bureaucracy? I do not have it. Does Julian have it? There's no bureaucracy skill. Yes, there, there is. is. It's a knowledge. If you look at our seat. <clears throat> ah, there it is. I've got two. First edition. All right, so what is Crazy. your intelligence? Holy shit. Oh, Holy shit. Sorry. Uh, intelligence plus bureaucracy is seven. Yeah. Specialty and logical, whatever yeah, that you, means. Yeah, you know what you're doing. I picked the right guy to come with me. <laughs> yeah. I feel like paperwork's gonna happen. <laughs> I did. So yeah, I'm just you, like... you basically open this up and, like, you can just sense it. You can feel the paperwork before you. And instantly you know something is amiss. So you uh, go through and uh, find out they are actually... This is the billing address for the package, but this is not where it's meant to be delivered. It's meant to be delivered to uh, the airport and uh, one of the hangars out there. And uh, you actually scored so high you know that it's the hangar where Derek keeps basically Loden's private plane. So this okay. was supposed to be delivered to his private plane, and it mistakenly got delivered here. Hmm. Again, I'm looking at Julian and like, is did you order this? Like, what is this package? What is in here? So yeah, you, there isn't really any indication of what's inside. That's pretty much a mystery. It'll but Julian has no... There's been no, like, order for any sort of anything to be... Yeah, whatever it was, <laughs> Loden handled it personally. Huh. All of the financial stuff is in order, so it's not like someone else ordered it. It is Loden's uh, who ordered it, clearly. Oh. Well, I don't know. This is hinky, so I'm, my, you know, my spider sense is tingling. So, I suggest we leave it here and not open it. If Loden arises, when he arises, we can tell him, and, and possibly this is a mistake, and if so, we'll get it straightened out. The delivery but, man uh, is, he's about to leave, basically. Um, if you want him to re-deliver it to the thing, you could ask him. Oh, so he's still out there? I thought he'd left. No, he is still, he is basically in the process of leaving. So I will flag him down again. All right. So he turns around very exasperated. And says, yes, what is it? This was supposed to be delivered to the airport. Not here. And I'll have Julian explain it to him. <laughs> All right. So, uh, just before, like, Julian, like, basically opens his mouth, holding, like, this sheaf of papers, and the delivery guy's like, no, no, I believe you. <laughs> I... <laughs> hey, you've, never seen, you've never seen a man look so dead. He said, I will take the package to the airport. Okay. All right. So Good man. He starts, he basically starts organizing the doorman and everyone else to help him move it back into his truck. And um, are you guys going to help with that or just leave him oh, to it? No, I believe ma manual. <laughs> that seems yeah. like blue collar person things, you know. It really does. That's Derek oh, work. <laughs> it's Derek work. Really, it is. This part. All right. If he made a mistake on this part, maybe we should fuck it up again. Well, I think we'll tell Loden about this and make sure he's aware of his package and that it was. Tell him he'll be like, "You and you didn't go with." Me. <laughs> Julian, if you wish to go with him, I suppose you could. Uh, I don't think Julian trusts commoners very much, so maybe I will. <laughs> maybe you should send someone who knows the hangar really well. Who could tell maybe we exactly could send Derek. We would love to get rid of. <laughs> maybe we could do that. Wow. Send Derek. 
so special mission for you. So yeah, these two return upstairs to the penthouse. And uh, yeah. So yes. So we over to the airport, make sure it gets into the plane, or wherever it's supposed to be. Yeah, go. Well, since you asked so nicely. Yeah, just go. Uh, <laughs> and I'll exasperatedly get up. Blow a kiss, Natasha. I'll be right back, baby. Oh my God. Good. I need a new. I need a moving target later. <laughs> <laughs> Derek leaves the room and instantly everyone's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> Who is the package from? Um, Let me see if it That's... says. That was from us. Lauren, we, well, no, we're the billing. All it Apparently says in, in the book, it actually does say this. All it says is it was a priority delivery shipped uh, out of Oregon. Oh. And that's, that's it. Fair enough. So I don't know. So from, so from Zach. <laughs> also, also, it's the 70s, so I assume you, pronu you uh, pronounce it Oregon. Oregon back then? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't know. Someplace out in Oregon. Can we trust Derek by himself? God, no, we can't, but... Well, I mean, if you want to join me, by all means, feel oh. free. <laughs> uh, she'll tuck the, the pistol away into, like, a, a underarm holster, put on her jacket, and, and get ready to go with them. All right. I knew you'd come <laughs> around sometime. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> cool. It was like, glutton. <laughs> <laughs> well... If it was with you, it would be a century, darling. <laughs> and with that, she'll get in the elevator. All right. So you guys uh, head out to take care of the parcel. And um, oh, you good. guys... supposed to party now. Yeah. Fortunately, you aren't attacked by anything uh, on the way there. Um, but you do get to basically hear an earful from uh, the, de uh, the delivery guy, Harold. Basically, he complains the whole way up about how this isn't on his route. And basically, you know, he shouldn't even be doing this. You know, he made the delivery. The only reason he's doing it is because that Julian Curry guy, he had a gleam in his eye when he held that paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> and it would just be easier to do it this way. Um, so he'll basically just talk your ear off the whole way up there, unless someone stops him. And yet your voice is still more pleasant than Derek's. <laughs> he kind of looks over at you and then he kind of smiles and says, ah, oh, thanks. And then he just goes back to the drive. Kid, I don't believe she meant that as a compliment. Yeah, it was an insult to you. <laughs> He's, he kind of nods and then he says, yeah, it was mostly neutral towards me. <laughs> <laughs> so why'd you thank her, then? I mean, I'm, I'm a delivery guy. I mean, neutral is pretty good for me. Because he I, knows... I suppose you guys have low standards. <laughs> and he it, knows when a, a beautiful neutral. woman gives him um, not even a compliment, but the Just slightest bit of attention his... to accept yeah. it. <laughs> Just talks in his direction. He's happy. <laughs> yeah. All right. So meanwhile, back up at the penthouse, uh, okay. not too long after the others leave, you hear um, basically a knocking at the door. It's more of a pounding, really. I was going to say, uh, okay, they've left and we're in the penthouse now. Yep. And what, is there a peephole? Uh, yes, there is. Okay, I'm looking through the peephole. Um, it's some jackass in cowboy gear. Uh, you do actually recognize him. He's one of Loden's spies. Well, all right, I'll open the door. All right. So uh, he kind of bursts into the room, basically. And uh, he's just like, I need to see Loden. He's not awake yet. Well, you go and you find him and you get him up. I need to see him. Tell me what 
you need to see him about. I'll fucking answer to you, boy. And he kind of shoves you back. Go get loading. Tell me what you need to see him about. All right. So at this... Uh, uh, Julian, where are you exactly when this confrontation is taking place? David? Sorry? Where are you? Where's your guy when this is taking place? Oh, well, I presume he just went back to his business, so I guess that bedroom for six. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, you, uh, then you just kind of hear the kind of struggle take place. Basically, uh, uh, I, I, well, I'll head out there, I guess. All right. And be like, all right. what's all this then? <laughs> So you see, uh, the sheriff basically tries to shove uh, Rourke out of the way, so... Let's see. What is uh, your uh, strength plus a brawl there, Rourke? My strength plus brawl is six. Okay. And do you have uh, potence? Do I have potence? That's a very good question. Do I have potence? Yes, I do. I have potence of one. Oh, okay. protein! Nice. None of it. All right. <laughs> we'll turn out all the lights. <laughs> exactly. Give me the advantage. All right. Yeah, you actually don't do too bad at trying to restrain him, although he is still a vampire, so basically he is basically pushing past you, but you are, like, grabbed onto him and slowing him down at least when Julian uh, comes into the room. And says, what's all this then? Um, this person wishes to see Loden, but refuses to say why. Well, you can't just see Loden without stating your business, sir. So, when he sees you come out, he eventually, uh, he just kind of stops. And he says... Find Loden and tell him that it has to do with a unauthorized embrace within the city. Very well. Thank you. All right. Wait here and we'll tell him that. Oh, and by the way, my comedy southern accent didn't just uh, drop for no reason there. When he, uh, he seems to be basically on the verge of frenzy, and he kind of loses the accent at that point. It seems as though... <laughs> It seems as though it is an affected accent, yes. Alrighty, good to know. Okay, Alright, um, we'll all have we'll Julian... Us, yeah, will let's... one of us stay with him while the other goes to pass on the message? So yes, I'll go pass on the message. Wait, and who's better in a fight? Well, me, but probably. Well, whoever is more physical should stay, right? Alright, so I'll have you go. I'll give you the nod, Julian. Alright, cool. I head off. Alright. So you go uh, up to the vault and kind of buzz in. There's a system for that. And then uh, you know that Loden definitely hates to be disturbed, so he is very curt when he comes on and says, Yes, what is it? Strange man here to talk to you about an unauthorized embrace. I guess he is one of, this guy is one of Loden's spies. So you could say that, one of your spies. One of your spies, sir. So there's silence on the other end, and then he says, very well. And then uh, the vault door opens, and he says, send him in. All right, I head back uh, to get him and tell him he can come in. All right. So yeah, he goes in, and he kind of smiles smugly at the two of you. Kind of. <laughs> and I just smile smugly back because Logan's not going to be pleased. He does kind of the rude thing where he doesn't like necessarily like push you out of the way, but he kind of like on purpose accidentally bump bumps me? into you. Yeah. I don't like that guy. And he goes into uh, the vault. And then uh, he's in there for a few moments. And then he eventually storms out again, uh, basically mumbling under his breath, owes her something. <laughs> owes her nothing. 
and then he uh, basically doesn't acknowledge either of you, heads straight to the front door, opens it, slams it shut, and leaves. I will exchange a look with Julian. <laughs> I'll laugh as he walks off. Mm-hmm. Just be like... Ah. <laughs> All right. So as for the two of you at the hangar, you managed to uh, basically get the package out of the truck with no problems, and basically as soon as it's off the truck, Harold, like, runs back inside, and he just takes off. <laughs> She's going to look around the package, see if there's anything suspicious about it. Yeah, why don't you give me a um, perception plus investigation? That is going to be four. See, yeah, you um, yeah, you check around. It doesn't look like there's anything suspicious about the package. It looks like it's um, it is definitely priority shipping. Um, there's no, it doesn't look like uh, a bomb or anything like that. You don't hear any ticking or anything like that. Um, it was the seventies. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so if you want to, we can open, it up, open it. Yeah, if you want to open it up, you can try and get some more information, but it looks normal from the outside. That is boss man's business. Yeah, I would, yeah. Knowing Loden probably would not want you snooping through his stuff. Could we call him? Um, you could. There is a phone in the, uh, the hangar. Uh, she'll give the, the penthouse a call. Okay. So yeah, the phone rings here, and obviously Loden never answers his own phone, so one of the two of right. you in the penthouse can open answer it. Well, I'll answer the phone. Hey, it's Natasha. We're, we got everything dropped off here, and the jackass boy who dropped off the package at the wrong address has scurried away. Um, is Loden up yet, or is he still sleeping? He's just gotten up. We had a uh, we had an unannounced visitor, and he may not be in the best of moods. So I haven't yet broached the subject of the package, but I'm going to be doing it soon. All right, we're going to hang out at the the hangar. Uh, let us know who is the visitor. Uh, oh, one of his spies, that crazy one that dresses up like a cowboy. Oh, that silly fool. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll hang out here. Uh, give us a call back at the hangar. Okay. And she'll hang up. Okay. So, what they say? Um, cowboy man woke up the... Woke up... <laughs> almost said the prince. Uh, <laughs> woke up loading early. And? He's cranky. He hasn't come out of the, uh, the vault yet. All right, so we just gotta wait around here then, I suppose. Yep, just for a few minutes. Safety off the gun. Hand on the <laughs> Well, at least we've got good company. I just assume Natasha approaches Derek. You've got good company. <laughs> I assume Natasha approaches Derek like a police officer in like South Central Los Angeles approaches any traffic stop. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Alright. So yeah, do you uh, ask about the package? So yes, if Loden... Um... Is up and awake and yeah. seemingly okay. I will mention that a package was mistakenly delivered downstairs. We was supposed to be delivered to the hangar at the airport, uh, but it was mistakenly delivered here. We have it rerouted to the airport. Derek and Natasha went to make sure it arrived there safely. Do you have any instructions, sir? Yes, have them uh, open the package and get it onto the plane. This is as good a time as any to tell you that we will be leaving the city very soon uh, on an important errand. I see. Do you wish Derek to uh, file the flight plan? and? Yes, make preparations for a flight to London and have uh, clothes packed for all of you. Okay, very well. So I'll get Amber and Julian working on the packing. I will give the hangar a call. Okay. Natasha. 
All right. So Loden wants us wants you guys to open the package and get it loaded onto the plane and have Derek make arrangements for a flight to London. Derek, call the the tower. Let them know we're taking off. For All right. That's something he should be able to handle. I'll <laughs> get the package undone and, and start yeah, looking. I got any up. more info than just that? Okay, how long have you been with Logan? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I'll, I'll hang up. I'll be like, I know you can take care of it, Natasha. We got stuff to do. Bye. <laughs> All right, bye. Uh, she still treats it like it's a bomb. All right. When she begins to open it up just to, to be on the safe side, because that's an awfully long way for a quote-unquote confused package to arrive. Okay. Yeah, no, but really, you got any more info than just that? You want it to be ASAP? You want it to be tomorrow? When? What? As soon as possible. She said tonight. All right. There we go. Okay. So, yeah, as you open up very carefully, uh, you see that inside, um, it's basically a package, and inside is a big trunk. And um, at first it's kind of unclear, but, I mean, you score pretty high, so you... Um, your investigation kind of reveals sort of the mechanism behind it. It looks like it opens up from the inside, and it's big enough for a person to basically sleep in. So you presume this is a basically sort of a portable coffin to make sure that Loden doesn't get caught out in the sun. <clears throat> All right, she'll load it up in the back. All right. Is there a suite on the um, on the plane? Yeah, there's like a little private area for where Loden stays. She'll put it in there. Okay. She's making the assumption. <laughs> okay. So, it is a little while before the plane trip happens, so we will switch back to our regular characters. All right. Okay. Okay. So, you guys arrive at the Princess Haven, and it's basically like I described it earlier. Um, this time, however, you guys get into the elevator right up, and, uh, the sheriff is with you, still looking very kind of smugly at all of you. And, uh, when you arrive, you find it's a little bit, basically it's, uh, the same, but it looks like it's been ransacked a little bit. Um, not too much. But as you get to the the, the most obvious uh, part of the haven is the vault door, obviously, and it has been actually ripped literally off the hinges and pulled and is basically tossed over to the side. Hmm. All right, let's investigate that for starters. Okay. So let's and see. I'm going to ask Ryan to take a close look at everything and let me know what he Will do. Okay. So, are there any claw marks, first of all? Um, alright. So, well, actually, I'll give you a description. You guys may want to split up how you're searching, so let me give you a description of the rest of the room first. Um, I'll assume that you, Miles, are looking at the, the vault door. Well, if there's a computer, I'd like to look at that instead. Um, there actually is a computer inside as well. Right then. I'd like to investigate that. Okay. So, uh, if you boot it up, it is a password protected, so it takes an intelligence plus computer's role to get through it. Okay, let's see here then. That would be four. All right. If you want someone, if someone else wants to take the computer's role, yeah. I'll let him try. Um, I will say. Uh, the sheriff isn't in the room yet, but you are basically looking through the prince's personal files. You might not have as much time. Oh, okay. I will shove uh, <laughs> shove to the side, and I'll do a six on that roll. Okay. It's almost like you don't trust me. No, I just want to do it quickly. Hmm. And she doesn't trust you to do it quickly. Okay. Do we get in? Um, yes, you do uh, crack through the passcodes. 
So, All right, then. I would like to look at his financial history. It is a wits plus computer's role to try and uh, find out information on here. It's five for me. Wits, that's two for me, so no. Okay. <laughs> Once again, uh, Stephen will remain at the computer. So what is it that you would like to look up exactly? Do you want to look up the financial information? Uh, um, yeah, any financial information, any, uh, um, Jonathan's welcome to read over my shoulder. Um, mm -hmm. any, um, like if there's a, a, a personal calendar date book kind of a thing. Okay. Like where his last, um, what his, what his movements have been in the past, in the prior days. Okay. So you can find his financial information. It's basically, I mean, he's got financial information going back literally years. You can pour through it if you want, but it's going to take literally hours yeah. to do that. Can we get really it printed out or somewhere? Can we send it somewhere? Um, you could try and do that, um, although there is no internet connection on this computer. Yeah. I don't have a USB drive probably on me. Um, and this computer is not new enough to have a USB port. Is there a printer or something nearby? Um, there is not one connected to this computer, no. Can I quickly scribble down some of the most recent information on it, just so I can get a, uh, so I can try to figure something out with that? Yeah. It I'm is... gonna make use of these fucking points of finance. All right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, give me a intelligence plus finances roll. Seven. Yeah, so you're looking through it, and it looks like it's mostly bills and things, just kind of for various, uh, like, havens uh, around the city, various investments he's made, things like that. Nothing specifically useful in the next few, last few days? Yeah, you score no, high enough. No, nothing suspicious? Yeah, you score high enough, you don't think he's been buying anything suspicious um, recently. Hasn't been blackmailed or anything? Nothing at all? Doesn't look like that, no. Huh. Does he have a personal diary? Um, so let's see, and as you are basically realizing that there's nothing there, the sheriff kind of pops his head into the vault and uh, says, What the hell are you doing? Get off that thing! And he goes over and he uh, basically shuts off the computer and says, Y'all here to investigate, not to look through the prince's personal things. That is how we investigate things. And just... I would have liked to see what his previous movements have been. If you're going to hinder our investigation because you wish to frame us, then there's no point in any of this. He narrows his eyes and says, if you can try and plant information somewhere here to prove your innocence, then go ahead and try it. You're not going to do it on the prince's computer. And he basically sits up on the desk. And if you planned on our computer, it would be immediately obvious that you did so. All right, Mr. Smarty Pants, you just get the fuck out of here. And he pushes well, yes, that's what I'm trying to do by proving my innocence. He seems like he is very uh, reluctant to assist you guys. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, I've noticed. <laughs> um, All right. So let me quickly go through now the other elements here. Um, so let's see. There is actually a uh, person here, one of the retainers. Um, it's actually Natasha that you can talk to. There is also a dead body uh, in the Haven as well. And uh, you guys don't recognize uh, the person, but um, a quick check of his uh, ID card shows that it is Julian Curry, and he is fully dead. Okay, how did he oh. die? Um, give me a second. What is your uh, perception plus investigation? Or you can actually do uh, perception plus medicine. 
going to say actually perception. Uh, it's five for investigation and it's four for medicine. All right. Medicine is a little bit more applicable since it's uh, you're trying to find out how he died. Yeah, so there's a basically big hole uh, through his head. It looks like he was killed with a pretty high caliber pistol. Really took me medicine to see the big hole in his head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> the difficulty was pretty low. Uh, it's also a high caliber pistol, and from the uh, burns on the body, or like the gunpowder, it looks like it was fired at very close range. Huh, interesting. Okay. But yeah, the body has been dead for some time. Okay, and Natasha's just like hanging out here because... Yeah, Natasha is here. Well, she was also here at the time of the attack as well. Okay. And actually, why don't I... Um, I'll send uh, Cool Imp a little message uh, basically just detailing what Natasha knows. And uh, you can play the character okay. again. Since, you know... All right, so I'm just going to instruct Ryan to just sort of look around the entire apartment and notice anything out of place. If he can find a diary or some sort of date planner or whatever, um, that would be awesome. Okay. Um, and then Jonathan and I can go talk to Natasha. Okay. Unless Jonathan wants to do something else. No, I just wanted to get to use my fine enders, honestly. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you're looking okay. for the, uh, like a journal first? Is that what you said? Yeah, a, a diary, a journal, anything. Anything that might shed some light on what happened in the past few days. Okay. So as you um, look through, that would be, you said it was five for your intelligence plus investigation. Or uh, perception plus investigation. And I want Ryan to do this as well, because I know he has a higher perception plus investigation. Shall or, I try with all specs? Within game, I know Ryan has sort of a sixth sense about these sorts of things, being Malkavian. Okay. Yeah, I've got seven. Yeah. So those are those, so my instructions to you, Ryan, is look for anything that you think is out of the ordinary, or find a journal or something, or a date planner or something like that. Holy cow! Did you send it to me on Twitch or through? Uh, uh... I'm sending it. I haven't sent it yet. I'm still okay. uh, basically typing it in in between doing other things. <laughs> We've got him working hard. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, all right, I'm going to do this. And Mary's like, well, I want to investigate this and this and then also this. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> well, I was delegating. I was delegating tasks to everything. I didn't mean Stephen was going to do that. I thought I made that clear before. Yeah. Stephen's going to go talk to Natasha. Yes. And but Ryan, I don't want him right. looming. I wanted him doing something else. All right. So, uh, first we'll do... I did send it to you, uh, Cool Imp. Um, I see it. Alright, so we have... Um, Ryan's search of the room. So, you don't find, like, a personal diary, but you do find a journal of some kind, um, which seems kind of cool to you. You know, you, I don't know, you're looking around and you find a lot of little knickknacks, but this thing kind of stands out to you. And as you sort of leaf through it, you see that it's the journal of a different guy called Admiral Turney, who was a British admiral in the days leading up to World War One. So okay. you're just kind of leafing through it. Seems kind of 
important, and at the very end you find there's a little note on the last page which says, Dedicated to Rourke, a fine retainer who sacrificed his life to bring me a book of worthless value. And, uh... Wow. And, like I said, it just seems very... Sort of your insight seems to be telling you that maybe this is important somehow. Okay. Um, and then in addition to that, you also notice uh, that it seems like just kind of general CSI work. Um, you feel like there's only one person that was involved in this attack. You don't see any signs of multiple people. Okay. All right. Let's see. I thought there. <laughs> Alright. Um, oh, in addition to that, you also find one other thing, which, again, of all the papers you're just kind of filing through, it looks kind of important to you on Loden's desk. Okay. It is a report from Edward Neely to Loden, which concerns some activity in a wooded area to the northwest of Chicago that smacks of Satanism. Um, in and of itself, this isn't a problem. However, there are... Um, Neely says he has talked to some elders with uh, powers of Auspex who believe that there is some sort of mystical power there. I'm not sure. It could be like mortal mages, maybe some kind of Tremere trap. Who knows? But it Dangerous. could presumably pose a threat to the masquerade. Um, and Loden has kind of marked it for investigation later. And there is a map of Chicago with the kind of the area circled nearby. Uh, All right. So the two of you uh, are going. Jonathan and Stephen are going to talk to Natasha. Yeah, I believe that was the plan. Okay. So it is a uh, yeah. You go into the security room is where she's waiting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll introduce ourselves. Dr. Stephen Higgins and um, Jonathan Weiss, and we're here. We just would like to ask you a few questions about the attack. Yes, What's, what are your questions? So tell us, please, what, what happened. I wish I could. I woke up, and I, I don't know who would have the the raw strength to rip that door off. I don't think there was an attack. I've okay. never slept through one before. Okay, and when did, when did, so you woke up, is this in the evening or during the day or? Was it during the evening? Um, it happened actually during the daytime. <clears throat> um, it was, it's when I woke up during the day in the afternoon. Okay. Hmm. And you woke up, and the door was already ripped off? The door was ripped off. Okay. And you woke up the same place you went to sleep. You're certain you haven't been moved afterwards? If someone moved me around, they made very good care not to bruise me. Okay. Normally, someone who's going to rip the door off of a vault like that is not going to care whether or not someone like myself is injured. Right. right, so we can cross that one off the list then. So, when we looked at the door, and I might have Ryan look at the door, is, was the door ripped off from the outside, or was it pushed out from the inside? Um, yeah, uh, Ryan basically can inform you, it was basically someone walked up, grabbed onto it, and literally, like, yanked it off from the outside. Okay. Using claws, or...? Um, well... You don't know if it was exactly potent, if it were a vampire, but obviously someone would have some potence-like ability 
to rip a vault door off the hinges. Yeah, but, there, but there's no claw marks. No, it's no, not like it was yeah, that's what I mean. It's not like claw marks or Yeah, that's what I am uh, just checking really quick. All right. Um, actually, yes, it does appear as though there are some sort of claw marks. Because yeah. it'd be hard for a vampire to come in here during the day. Yes, it definitely would. But werewolves could do so. And you didn't hear... Okay, Natasha didn't hear anything, and you woke up. Was there anybody else here with you, obviously, besides the dead man? Was there? When she woke up? Um, No, there was no one else... Yeah, it's just the two of you. It was just me today. Or whenever. I don't know when the actual day was. My bad. <laughs> Derek and uh, mm. Derek and Amber were off doing something with each other. Shirking their duty, obviously. I see. Um, and, was, and was the gentleman dead when you awoke? Yes. It's... The way you see it now is not too is not different from when I woke up. Okay. So you slept through the door being ripped off and the gunshot wound to the head. Yes. You slept through these. Yes. So if you want to give me a, um, I guess an intelligence plus um, a cult. Um, I'm going to say seven on that. All right. Yeah, based on what you're seeing, you feel very confident that she's been dominated. I see. Okay. <sighs> Can I attempt to dominate her and un? <laughs> you've been you've been mind controlled. Let me help you. Look into my eyes. Yeah. Yeah, look and let me mind control you now, because she is just a ghoul, right? Yeah. So, uh, so what um, is Natasha's? As... As she starts to look into her eyes, she draws the guns and put it between hers. No, thank you. All right. Um. And she starts looking at her lips instead of her eyes. I've been around your kind way too long. Yeah. No, calm down. There's no reason for that. <laughs> I'll try to exude. A, I'll try to exude a calming aura. All right. The old calming aura. It's, and I'm going to give a really good skill. to Ryan to come over here and disarm her <laughs> and pin her down so that I can look in her eyes and try and figure out what really happened. All right. So, um, yeah, it's basically the sheriff kind of sees this kind of commotion going on. He's like, what's going on here? This ghoul is not cooperating. <sighs> so what... He kind of then he turns to Natasha's like, "What the hell were they trying to do?" Dominate me. Ah, oh, and alter your memories to make you think that they weren't responsible. I think I understand all too clearly. Now you're making an awful lot of assumptions again. Mm -hmm. Now he kind of motions uh, towards these guys and then kind of sails up to you, Natasha, and says. These are the ones that were responsible for what happened. Now, hold on. If you're going to be saying shit like that, then we're obviously not going to get anywhere. What's even the point of all this? Prove their innocence. And Do I does. have my cell phone? And she'll look at the sheriff, then let them prove their innocence. No one's going inside my brain. All right. Do I have my cell phone? Uh, yes, you do. Okay, so <laughs> while he's doing this stupid things. I'm, I'm texting Terry mm -hmm. to try and get my satchel back. Okay. And my weapons. So, um, if you want to try and still uh, subdue Natasha, you can, although... No, because the sheriff's not going to let me. This is a dead end. Additionally, I'm gonna talk to it Ryan. would also uh, require a humanity uh, check to see if you... Yeah. <laughs> no, that evidence is dead. I'm going to go to Ryan to see what he found out. Okay. So, yeah. Pretty much whenever the sheriff starts going off, Stephen will disengage <laughs> and go to something else. That's how I'm ha dealing with this, because I'm, right. I'm not playing this stupid little game. All right. So, yeah, uh, Ryan, you basically finished up. You just grabbed basically the, the letter about the Satanists, put it in your pocket when Stephen comes in. Um. 
Hello. So, so did you find anything? Is, is the sheriff? Quickly before the sheriff comes in here and interrupts, um, did you find anything? <laughs> the sheriff is not in line of sight right now. No, he's out there still yelling at Jonathan. Yeah, he... <clears throat> I wink at the... And you're breaking up and I can't hear you. What now? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I wink at you and uh -huh. respond, nothing so far. Okay. Do you repeat the wink a couple more times and very slowly while pointing at your eye? <laughs> no. <laughs> nothing here. Alright. Then I will I, wink I, back I, at you, Ryan. I'm going to wink back at you, and I'm going to say I'm going to try and get our weapons back. Okay. All right, so as you guys are discussing this, uh, inside the office, the phone rings. But then I'll answer. It's inside the office where they are. Ah. You're she, still out she, there. The sheriff is belittling you. I run in to answer. <laughs> I have all specs activated. Well, the sheriff is... Is it so the uh, I, security office or just the office it office? It is Loden's personal office. Okay. I'll, I'll answer the phone. Get in there. All right. So, uh, basically, the sheriff is also kind of interested, and Jonathan is coming in, Ryan. You kind of can see them sort of heading in your direction while Stephen picks up the phone. So, hello? hello. All right, so... On the other uh, side, you hear a guy, he's kind of like, there's heavy breathing, and then he's like, I got this stuff. I'm listening in via aspects. Okay. Where do you want to meet? Man, I don't know. Some place where there's no people around. You understand? Oh, brewery, oh, brewery. Burn down. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's an old burnt-down brewery. He kind of, yeah, it's like, yeah, that, that's good. Make sure you have the cash. What time? Uh, there's like a little pause. Well, presumably he checks the time. He's like, half an hour. All right. Be there. And then he hangs up. Okay. <laughs> Don't mind doing that. I'll hang up. All right. All right, and then let's go then. The sheriff and say, we're done here. <laughs> all right. Well, the sheriff kind of shrugs and says, all right. And then he kind of looks over towards uh, Natasha. He says, uh, why don't you uh, clean up this place? Ah, yes, the temple of the evidence. Well done. Brilliant. It's uh, a little messy. He kind of goes over to the body and sort of nudges it with his foot. Yeah, I'll call the cleaning <sighs> <service> right away. <laughs> Alright. And so he very By the way, whatever face you imagine I'm doing right now, my character is doing and throwing his arms around. <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> and the sheriff leads you guys out of the haven. And All she right. didn't even respond in the way everyone expected. <laughs> All right. Yeah, as, you, as he leaves, you kind of feel like Jonathan's spirit animal is Derek. You're not sure how that works. Uh, so let's see. As you guys are riding the elevator down, however, Ryan, you begin yes. to feel kind of a sick sensation in your stomach, and you feel images coming into your mind. Do you want to try and resist the visions, or just give in to them? I will accept them. What was that? He embraces his vision. I will vision. accept them. Okay. And by the way, just, if you, just in case you wanted to know, I have invested in a point of Malkavian time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, you feel like you're falling and falling and falling. 
and then uh, you find yourself in a deep pit or some sort of hole dug into the ground. The rock is cold underneath your feet, and far above your head you see a light from a hole in the ceiling. It seems to be the only entrance to this cave. As you look around the rest of the cave, you hear something behind you, and as you turn around, you see this horrible shape charging towards you. Before you can protect yourself, you are struck down, and you feel yourself slowly being torn apart limb by limb. The image fades as you desperately attempt to escape this ferocious beast and preserve your life in the face of a vicious onslaught. And why don't you give me a self-control roll? Give you a what? Self-control. Or. All right. So, uh, yeah, the rest of you, as you're just kind of, you know, sort of awkwardly, silently going down in the elevator, uh, Stephen, you kind of look over and you notice that Ryan has kind of a glazed look on his face. And then he starts... It looks like he's, uh, the beast is rising in him, basically. Oh, that's not good. So I will call out again to Ryan. Yeah, you try and get through. Basically, as you come back into the elevator car, you kind of feel, you know, Steven next to you, trying to calm you down. And, uh, you do not go into frenzy at this time. Fantastic. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> First time. Evil triumphs again. <laughs> oh. oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Alright, so where do you guys want right. to go next? Well, we need to get but rid of the brewery. Obviously. <laughs> Alright. So you guys head into the brewery. Uh, apparently. Um, do you want to... He did say bring the cash with you. Do you want to stop off and get some cash first? Um, yes, if there's an ATM. All right. How much do you want to get? I have absolutely no idea. I'll draw it a thousand. Okay. So, you, uh... Does anyone else want to get out cash while you're at the ATM? Yeah, I'll get out... A thousand as well. Okay. Ryan, you're good. You don't need your 500. Does he even keep it in the bank? Don't keep it on my person. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, never mind. I feel like it's stuffed okay. in a mattress in Fair there. Enough. <laughs> Ryan, does, Ryan does not trust bikes. and keeps his money in cash. All right. Yeah. Fair enough, then. Yeah. All right. So... You guys uh, head out to the brewery, and uh, when you arrive, uh, the sheriff seems kind of dismissive that you want to come here. He's like, what are you doing? All right, whatever. He's like, it's your time. You can spend it however you want. And he basically lights a cigarette, and he just stays in the van, chilling out while you guys go inside. All right, Fine. so do you want to make it so maybe someone's distracting him while uh, someone else takes care of the meeting? So, yeah, Jonathan, I think you're best at distraction. <laughs> if only there's a hot man to stay here and seduce him. He really, he really seems to like no. <laughs> Plus, I'm calling Terry to bring him up to speed. Okay. And have him tail us, at least, in case we get into some trouble. Fine, then. In that case, you'll take this. You will pay this back, by the way. I'll give you the thousand dollars I took out. You will pay this back. Well, I may not even use it. I'm not. I'm hoping not to. Well, then you can pay it back immediately. Exactly. <laughs> but we All not right. meet Terry first and retrieve our weapons. Well, that's what I'm hoping. If if I can text him, if I could, when I texted him, if I could tell him to be at the brewery because that's yeah. where we're going to meet up with us. Yeah. And if we can get our weapons back, and um, and have this meeting. And then, if he can tail us to kind of keep an eye on us. Yeah, he says, um, he responded to your text, basically, that he was going to try and be there as soon as he can. He wasn't sure if he was going to be there before the meeting takes place in half an hour, but he will be there around that time. Okay. okay. All right. So, having a little powwow, how are we going to get rid of the sheriff? Because obviously we can't investigate with him around. He's going to stonewall us at every chance. 
Shall I try to distract him then? So I yeah. really don't want to, but <laughs> it's not like he's going to be distracted by Ryan. That's true. And Ryan's the guy who investigates because he's got the perception. Um, and 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 I'm just going to clobber the guy. <laughs> so yeah, is Derek still with us? Um, he is, but he doesn't feel have confident him. in his ability yeah. to distract anyone. I was going to say he can hang out with Jonathan while he distracts a guy. All right. So um, you and Ryan are going in then, and the rest of you are staying out in the uh, van. Yeah, yeah, we'll split the party again. That's a good okay. idea. Good. I always love it when people split the party. <laughs> All right. This is where we buy our cocaine that we use to find the lasers, right? <laughs> So as you uh, head into the brewery, you see there is a um, uh, a young man in gang attire, basically, who is watching all the corners of the room very carefully. And when you come in, he's like, he seems very surprised. And then he sees Ryan, and he feels a little better, but he's like, all right. So he goes up to the two of you. And he addresses himself to Ryan and he says, All right, I got the stuff. You got the money? Note, I took out my money in a hundred dollar bill, so you can just flash a bunch of them to prove that you have it. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, Steven? So, yes, you were there with us. You, you know that we have money. So Ryan, you're a drug dealer. This you should. This is wait, a familiar wait, wait. Sort of thing. Steve, yeah, Stephen, you're there with me. Right. So I'm just gonna let you go with this, though, because you know I don't do drug deals. You do. I don't like talking to people. <laughs> you do it. Very well. Let me see the goods. All right. He opens up. He basically pulls out a fanny pack. And he opens up inside. You can see there is uh, a white powder inside. Mm hmm. So I will dip my finger in and taste it. All right. You sure you don't want me to, like, entrance or something? It's anthrax. Fortunately, you have eat food, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're no, already dead. Uh, they don't need to worry about anthrax. Are you sure you don't want me to also be there so I can entrance him, just make him tell us everything? What do you have dominate? Cross the sheriff. Okay, just, well, just do that then. Well, I don't know what this guy is here for. I want to see what this. What is this white powder? Is it cocaine? It is cocaine. Yeah. So, all right. So, how much does he have you on him? Like, what was for the he... first part of the '80s? You know, cocaine. Okay. So. So. Yeah, yeah, but he's skittish, and I don't know how to. I don't know if he even knows anything. If he's just the drug dealer. Anyway, so how much cocaine does he have? He says, I got two keys. 2,500 each. 2,500 each? Yeah, we don't need that much. Um, yes, we do. Yes, we do. I don't have that much money on me. Dominate him and take the fucking cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I do that? This guy's just trying to make a living. Because you're a vampire. <laughs> yes, but I'm I'm trying to be better. I'm a I'm a good person. What is your current humanity rating? It's six. Alright. I wouldn't require a conscience roll for this, but I would say it doesn't help you gaining any humanity. Right, exactly. It's not gonna help me gain any humanity. So Okay, but if I just hit him in the head <laughs> I'm not gonna let you just hit him in the head. You do have, so, you do have, between the three of you, you do have enough for one of the kilos. Try and stop me. So, uh, I will, Ryan. Anyway. So, do you regularly do business with Loden? Is what I ask. It says, who the fuck is Loden? So, who was it you were, so Natasha? I mean Natasha. <laughs> Uh, he's like, no, I'm calling Ken. Ken? You're not Ken? You're not a fucking cop, are you? No, we're with Ken. We're just making sure. Sorry, he goes by a lot of names. Hard to keep track. Alright. 
He's like, he kind of looks around, he's like, you know, I don't think you're with Ken, but I don't really give a fuck right now. I need to get out of the city. Are you going to pay me for this shit or not? Um, do I really need cocaine? I really don't need cocaine. All right, here's the plan. All right, you give him the money, he turns around. I obfuscate, I get the money back. And Ryan's not telling you this, so you won't okay, have any Okay, 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 but Ryan, think about this. We make our own drugs. Why are we buying drugs from other people? Just do it. If you want to give me a... Uh, we'll see. Give me, if you want to give me a uh, wits plus, mm, I guess, finances, or uh, since I know you don't have Streetwise. Who, me? Um, wh whichever of you. I was gonna say, I don't have either finance or streetwise. I've got three. Okay. Yeah, three for me as well. Alright, you're not really an expert. Really ex you're not really an expert in high finance, but from this guy's body language, you feel like he is what we call a, um, a, uh, a. He's a customer who wants to sell, basically. He is a, right. a motivated what seller. Do I, I was going to say, what do, what, do, what do a couple of keys go for on the street? They probably don't go for 5000 You could get significantly more than, if you buy this now, you could get significantly more later. He's basically desperate to sell up and get out. I see. So, can I ask him that? Why are you so desperate to sell up and get out? Man, why, why the fuck is anyone desperate to get out? I got a kill order on me. From who? He says, I ain't here to tell you my fucking life story, man. I'm gonna tell you one word. And he leans in real close and then he says, Jackson. Hmm. See, now would be the time where you dominate him and force him to tell you everything he knows about this Jackson guy. Just do it. Force him to tell you his life story. <laughs> All right, so this guy is... So how does that work on my humanity? Um, that's not a, a problem as long as you're not doing so something that would in, harm him in some way. So he's leaning in and he's looking at me? Yeah. And then I just say, well, why don't you tell me about this Jackson person? All right. And then what is your manipulation plus leadership? That is... What is my manipulation plus leadership? It's five with plus two, so seven. So yeah, he basically says, Jackson, he's the guy who runs uh, Cabrini Green. He's got the whole thing under his thumb. Well, most of it. He's, and uh, why is he trying to kill you? Um, he, There was a misunderstanding in finances between them. I see. So he's never met with Jackson personally, basically. It's just the gang that he's with. Uh, he tried yeah. to basically screw them out of their money. And so now he's got to kill her yeah, out of He needs to get out of here. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I'll tell him that uh, I'll give him the money that we have with us, and that will be enough, and he'll give us the drugs, and then he'll he'll be able to, to go, and I'll give him the money that I have on me, and if I can get the 500 off of Ryan, I'll get 2500 Okay. So yeah, you pay him up. Do you take both kilos from him? Um, I will just take one. Okay. So yeah, as soon as that's over, he's like, alright, good. And then he basically runs out uh, the front door. Should he go out the front door? Is that where the van is? Yes, he goes past the van. Okay. Oh, um, when Does he, he make it past the van? Case. All right. He has to pickpocket the money back. All right. As soon as, basically, he's running past the van. You couldn't try and keep up with him if you want to, but as soon as, I mean, the sheriff, he, he sees you come out. Like, you can tell he watches you even when you're obfuscated. And as you start to basically go past the van, he makes a move like he's going to get out and try and stop you. So I also followed the guy before he got out of the building? No, he, as soon as, I mean, it's not a big building, you're 
a few feet away from the front door. As soon as he gets it, he runs. He's obviously scared for his life. Okay. Yeah, well. It's just money, Ryan. We can let it go. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Those were the only $500 he has until February, dude. I will give him more money. <laughs> There's no one around, right? All right. So, as this is happening, you guys notice, um... Let's see. Ryan, why don't you give me a perception... Actually, it's wits plus alertness. No, it is perception plus alertness. My bad. Five. Okay. Specialty and things that are far away. And Jonathan can give me this roll, too. Uh, what was the roll? Perception plus? Perception plus alertness. All right, that's four. Okay. Yeah, so basically the sheriff goes out and basically starts... He stops Ryan, starts yelling at him, berating him. I mean, you, you've heard what he's said up until now. It's basically more of that. Um... And then, Jonathan, you kind of look over your shoulder, and you notice that there is someone who is here creeping up to the van. And you recognize it as Damien, the uh, kid from the brewery that you saw before. And he's kind of motioning right. for you to be quiet, basically, as he's sneaking up. Okay, I'll try to distract the sheriff now, then, if I can, if he's around. Okay. Yeah, he's over there yelling at Ryan. So if you want to involve yourself in that and keep him busy. Oh, well, if he's, if, if he's already doing that, I'll just uh, sort of wait around till he stops that. Then I'll get his attention. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, Stephen, you come out as well. Find the sheriff is basically berating Ryan for trying to escape. Jonathan is acting casual nearby. And uh, why don't you give me, now that you're out here, give me a perception plus alertness. Four. Okay. Yeah, so you see um, a kid basically runs up, hides behind the van, and then around a corner nearby you can also see uh, Terry, who gives you kind of a thumbs up and then ducks back around the corner. All right. So, as uh, Jonathan, why don't you give me a... Uh, charisma plus subterfuge. That's five, and I'm captivating, if that helps. Actually, yeah, that's exactly what you're trying to do. Beautiful. So yeah, as soon as he's done yelling at Ryan, he kind of turns to you and you start kind of distracting him as well. And all do you want me to roleplay that, or...? Nah, it's pretty simple, unless you have something specific you want to say to him. But I wanted to shit talking about uh, the way he treated us and how he um, lied about, well, not lied, but how he accused us of trying to meddle with our memories. Okay. Back at the um, area. <laughs> all right. And so all of you then see, as he's turned back to start yelling at Jonathan now, all of you see uh, Damien come out from behind the van, behind the sheriff, uh, with a stake in his hand. And he begins creeping up to the sheriff. And then, unless any of you yell out a warning, he smashes the stake directly into the sheriff's back. No warning. Don't. Okay. Don't. What about the, sh the ghoul driving the van? Um, Who cares? He is still there, but basically as soon as the uh, sheriff gets staked, uh, Damien basically makes a motion for you guys to just kind of knock the ghoul upside the head. I was going to say, that's where Stephen had positioned himself so the ghoul could not run away and tell anybody. Yeah. He's sort of We've got contained. a group of, like, five vampires around here, so I, I assume oh. you guys subdue one ghoul. All right, so I just didn't want him to get away while we weren't looking. As, as funny so as it would be right. for another cool imp meth head situation here, yeah. I'm just going to <laughs> extrapolate that you guys succeed in subduing him. All right, so then Terry comes with my satchel and my zip ties, and we tie this guy up. All right. Yeah, so he is incapacitated. Very nice. And By the way, I'd completely forgotten about that silly <laughs> goose until you're reminding me. No, that's like my favorite part of your campaign so far. <laughs> All right. 
All righty. All right. So now we have control. Yeah. So Damien basically looks up at you guys and says, uh, I'm here to rescue you. <laughs> and he is You're very short in case you want to make some sort of comment. You're here to rescue me. <laughs> uh, says, yeah. Follow me. With Ben Kenobi? Short, was short to be a star <laughs> anyway, Yeah. And uh, he leads you guys over to Terry. And uh, he says, I noticed, I heard, ran into this guy. And he told me all about the shit that's been going down. Says, man, this is, this is fucked up. The elders are always doing this. Man, they're trying to blame you and nothing. You didn't even do nothing. That is true. That is true. So, and, uh, so, uh, I am Dr. Stephen Higgins. You obviously know my friend Terry. Yeah. He says, and I know Johnny Boy. Okay, Yo. this is Ryan Farrell. And do we have the pleasure? My name's Damien. Let's see. We appreciate the help, friend. Hey, the Anarchs are always looking out for, you know, vampire in trouble. Very nice. We will. It's good uh, to hear that. We will return the favor if ever we can. Says it's, and at this point, you notice it is very near dawn. At this point, you've been running all over the city for a little while. He says, yeah. "We've got. I know a place where you guys can lay low for a little while." Okay. There's a guy, and he'll watch over uh, Anarchs who are in trouble during the day in exchange for just a little bit of their blood. I don't think... He never uh, takes too much from one person, so I don't think you have to worry about him being, you know... Bound. Blood bound. Gotcha. But if you're willing to, uh, you know, make do with, you know, a pint less, then he can take care of you. Uh, that's fine for me, because now I got my satchel back, so I got my blood pills, so I'm good. All right. So he basically gives you the location, he sets up your GPS, says just head there, he'll take care of you. All right. We need to take care of the sheriff he and says, his ghoul. Don't worry, I got that under control. All right, I'll trust you on this one. Uh, I'm not, so what are you planning to do with him? Nothing permanent. I'll make sure he's, you know, we don't kill anyone. You don't want to invite And uh, just like that, you're clearly much better than he is. He says, you know, don't worry. We're, uh, we're civilized, unlike the elders. Clearly. Okay. Um, I will let you know that we probably need more time to clear our names. So, if you could keep him under wraps for another night. That would be he helpful. Says, got it under control. Don't worry. Gives you a thumbs uh, up. Says, Anarchs for life, yo. And then he runs off. He goes, you know, basically starts hauling the sheriff into the van. Maybe he'll do a little black power fist pump. <laughs> Anarchs for life. Yeah. And his British accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to look at Terry, and I'm going to say, I'm so you have the car. Yes, Terry did retrieve um, your vehicle. Um, you actually oh. did. You all traveled in the one vehicle, didn't you? Yeah, he retrieved it yeah. after you guys uh, were helicoptered off. Okay. Oh, I feel better with my satchel. So you guys going to head to the location that Damien gave you? Uh, we don't have much choice, I think. Okay. I trust him. I'm going. So as we travel then, we're going to switch back over to the flashback. And we pick up in basically the same situation as before. Um, you I guys are... we were getting late, but then I remembered it's daylight savings, and we're just an hour ahead. Yes. <laughs> we're... <laughs> Actually, we're probably going to end a little early. Um, so yeah, you guys are basically in the car heading to... All of you are jammed up into this little car, uh, heading up to the airport uh, to get on the plane for London. The flight plan's already been 
done. Um, yeah, you're basically just driving up. So, is anyone uh, doing anything kind of special in the car? Nah. Not he's loading with us? Yes, he is. So I will be asking if there are any special instructions on this trip to London. Does he need any um, arrangements made? I am happy to do that yeah. for him. You've got out, Julian's got out like a lint brush. He's checking load and making sure he's good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, he says, uh, I'll give you uh, instructions while we're on the plane. There's no, uh, you know, nothing to be concerned about at this time. Okay. And who is actually driving the car? Well, that's a very good question. I imagine it would be me, wouldn't it? Aren't I the one with those skills? Um, Let me double check, actually, to see if I have those skills. Uh, drive free per 35. Yeah, that's definitely me. Okay. So in that case, uh, you can give me a perception plus alertness. And... Um, Natasha, you're also kind of the security expert, so you can also give me a perception plus alertness. Natasha, you're at the airport. Uh, no, we, this is actually a couple of days later. You didn't fly oh, okay. immediately. <clears throat> you uh, told me to do it ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> Six. You had to be ready ASAP. Mine's five. All right. Okay. So, uh, you don't notice anything... Uh, Derek. Natasha, as you're looking out the back window, uh, you notice that there seems to be a car following you. Who's driving again, Julian? It's uh, Derek. Uh, Derek is I driving. Am. Oh, I have to interact with him. <laughs> <laughs> That's her thought. You know you want to. <laughs> Come on, Derek. baby. Lay it on me. You might want to... Be a little bit more careful. We're being followed. By who? Does it look like a police cop? Uh, like an undercover cop, it cop car? It does not look like the cops to you. At this point, Rourke begins to look out as well. Yeah, once, point them out to me, once and I'll lose them. Point it out. Yeah, you definitely all have it. It is a... Um, it is going to be a dexterity plus drive for you to try and lose this guy. All right. I'll get rid of them. Hold on, might get a bit bumpy. My roll is eight. Specialty in being steady, if that counts. Okay. Actually, yeah, it would. I'm going to withdraw my weapon. Holy cow. All right. So now, either they're amazing or awful. <laughs> I'm scared of which one. I mean, all of you are very surprised with this, because you basically think of Derek as just kind of like the fuck-up of the group. But, like, instantly, once he hears I prove them all right. Someone, <laughs> he's like, all right, it's go time. Shifts gears and then just slams on the gas. So he becomes he Terry. Playing in the background. Like, he channels Terry yeah. and actually becomes a good driver. You start, yeah, no, you start, like, weaving in and out of lanes. You're, like, running yellow lights. You're handbrake turning. It is uh, the most masterful you've ever driven in your life. And Natasha will say, so, a broken clock does tell time twice a day. Tell the correct time twice a day. I'm always right, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what a bob. Uh, anyway. All right. I'm right on time. So, yeah, you guys, uh, you're basically driving around. There's, like, as you hit into the airport, basically there is a perfect handbrake turn that ends with you guys like a foot away from the airplane you need to climb onto. Well, I hope you all enjoy the ride. All right, so You'll I'll get, get the first. door open and get Logan shielding him with my own body from anything that might get him onto the plane. All right. Yeah, you guys are all able to get onto the plane, and as soon as you're on there, he's like, let's take off immediately before anyone finds out where we're going. <clears throat> Natasha will make sure she's the last one on. She's keeping a lookout okay. while all this is going on. Yeah, if you want to do just kind of a general keeping an eye out for things, give me a uh, perception plus investigation. Uh, four. Okay. 
Okay. Why are you beginning to memorize stats? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you uh kind of make a you keep a lookout. No one seems to be coming, and the plane kind of starts to uh basically taxi onto the runway and take off. Um, well, one thing. Gonna do it. A check of the plane, too, once you're done. Here. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, you basically, as you're going back, you start. You guys start to check the plane. Um, Derek, obviously, since you had to take off immediately, didn't have time to do his pre-flight check. But as you are checking through, you find something that shouldn't be there. There's, like, a package in brown paper that was not there when you checked before. All right, this isn't good. This isn't good. Should we just open the airlock and uh, and and eject it? Do we have a bucket of water on the plane? Um, you guys have some water. You could get a bucket and fill it up. By the way, that's actually some a way that they actually dismantle bombs, submerging them in water. So we are in what the seventies? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have like C four at this point. It could be. It could be. Okay. It could be a human head. We don't know. We What's don't in the know. Box? We don't know. Well, that's what I'm saying. Do we just open the door and throw it out onto the runway? Ain't you the least bit curious? Loden, what would you like us to do? Um, he says, open it, but be very, very careful. As you wish. So we're doing the water trick first? Yeah, you can do that. So we right, can do the water case, first. We'll do that, and I'll open it. Derek, Derek, you are flying the frickin' plane. <laughs> Get back in the damn cockpit. <laughs> when she's I, imagine, I, figured we would, I figured this was before we were actually taking off. No, no we are taking off. Get taken in off. there and fly. <laughs> <laughs> can and I see, now, now he's on the can wrong I time again. <laughs> So it is going to be, he would be the best person to do it, but unfortunately, yes, you are driving the plane. It is just going to be a dexterity roll to see how carefully you can open this thing. All right, so mm, I have if dexterity only someone three. had steady hands. <laughs> but yes. Natasha can do it. All right. All right. Yes, you very carefully open this thing, and it is absolutely a bomb inside. And this is where we are going to take a uh, quick mm. break. We're gonna well, we're gonna switch back to the main characters, but also I have to use the restroom. So, yeah, while right. you guys chew on this piece of information, all right. Good thing I have security and firearms. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh god, wow, that's the perfect combination. What does Julian have? Miles, do you like your new updated artwork? <laughs> Beautiful. I know. <laughs> and for anybody wondering, um, the game I'm running, I had, I had yeah. four vampires who is having difficulty fighting two hunters. Oh. And although the hunter couldn't seem to stake one of the characters, the character couldn't hurt the hunter back. Why not? <laughs> Bad rolling. Wow. And then someone decided to break the masquerade, which was an interesting little side story. Are you telling the story of uh, Mick pulling out the claws? Yeah. <laughs> he um he recently he has real life issues that he's taking care of, so he dropped out of the game. I brought in the storyteller for my Victorian game, and it has changed everything. <laughs> Yeah, he seems like quite a card. Yes, he actually does wear those goggles everywhere he goes. Hmm. 
And the Victorian game is one that we play at a, a local gaming store. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, it's absolutely hilarious to see him playing a premiere in game instead of having to run the game. I'm hoping he runs in Glorious Mages. Yeah, no, he's... Premier. Yeah. Premier is by far the best clan. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I would hate to see, like, Steven and that guy interact with one another. <laughs> that would be the crossover from hell that no one needs. <laughs> oh, come on. He was uh, talking about running a... Um, mage game set in uh, Inglorious Bastards. Hmm. <clears throat> and I'm like, all right, I got you. And I'm going to play something stupid. I'm going to play um, a Space Marine Biker. <laughs> <laughs> because you can do that in Mage. <laughs> yeah. 1940s? Doesn't matter. Still a space marine biker. Actually, it probably makes more sense in the 1940s. <laughs> <laughs> kind of going with the idea, I always like like technocracy from that sort of era because it mage goes with the idea of whatever you think is possible is possible. So, like in the 1940s when no one understood what science could do, the technocracy is just like insane. <laughs> The other major I created, the first one I created for that game, if it ever happens, was a uh, code breaker. Because I was thinking about something useful to the game. And I'm like, well, I'm going to roll up a silly character, too, while I'm at it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Six and a half foot tall? Yeah, yeah, that's my guy. <laughs> yeah. So he's basically, Doesn't play basketball? <laughs> he's basically a character from Fallout. He's got, like, the plasma weaponry... No, the Warhammer weird, 40k. The weird red. Oh, oh yeah, no, right. he's one of the Blood Ravens. All right. Uh, no, Ravenwing from uh, Dark Angels. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, start up again. Let's see. All right, so you guys just arrived as real characters. You just arrived outside the location that you were told to go to by Damien. It's all fiction, Zach. There's no real, there's no real character. <laughs> Your present right. day characters. Thank you. All right. So, so we're, in the, we're in the Anarch Haven. Okay. Yeah, you've just arrived outside. It's a disused uh, 7 Eleven. And there okay. is. Yeah, it's basically just an empty parking lot outside. It looks like it's closed down. All right, was there a secret knock or something that we needed to, uh... Nope. Okay. So, we'll, uh, knock on the door. All right. So you head up to the door. And, uh, there's, like, uh, the door kind of opens slightly, and there's a guy inside. A second here. All right. So yeah, he's like, uh, as he's coming to the door, he's like, is that you, Bob? And then he sees uh, that it's you. <laughs> that it's not Bob. <laughs> and he's like, uh, yeah, what do you want? And you can see that he is kind of, he's dressed in like a police uniform. Okay. Which is not something that Damien mentioned, by the way. What Damien mentioned, by the way, is that you, Bob, um, I'm going to um, I'm going to dominate this person. Okay. And so, uh, is that, that really me. necessary? Not the, just uh, in transcend, maybe? The old panic dominate, and <laughs> say, um, let me in, please. <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, how, how about we stick to entrancement? Um, you do realize it's almost dawn, right? Fine, fine. Also, she was the Should one who said one. she went up to the door, so... Yeah, nobody else... I'm not going to turn around and go, Um, Jonathan, please come here and trance this policeman. <laughs> please, please show this man how hot you are for a second. Uh... <sighs> <laughs> Alright, what is your manipulation plus leadership again? Seven, Seven. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. So, you ask him to let you in? Mm-hmm. All right, so he steps inside and says, yeah, is there anything else I can do for you? 
Okay, I'm like, do you live here? Uh, no, we actually just raided this place a little while ago. There was, like, oh. some sort of cultist here. Some kind of crazy satanic cult's been using it as, like, a meeting spot, so we got called in. Run them out. We're just, uh, sticking around here to see if any more cult members show up. Hmm. All right, then. Well, this is bad. Okay. Thank you, sir. And I will turn around and we'll all get back in and drive away. Where are we going to go? Um, it is, you can actually see the horizon is actually pink at this point. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Is there any other abandoned building nearby here? Uh, no. So we're here? Okay. So, I'm going to look at the cop again. And I'm going to say, um, yeah, this is, is there, are there other policemen in the building? Uh, Bob said he was mm -hmm. going, uh, out for something, um... But, yeah, I'm the only one here right now. All right. Well, you're going to go out there. You're going to find Bob. And you're going to tell him it's all wrapped up here. No more cult people are coming by. And you're going to go back to your police station. And you're not going to come back here. Uh, all right. I think I can handle that. Have a nice night. All right. All righty. Thank you. All right. Have a nice evening, citizen. And he heads out right. onto the street. All right. So, um... Surely he meant morning. <laughs> Whatever. He did, but that's okay. He's that was, a little mixed up. That was one of the best dominate roles that I think I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> this guy doesn't know whether he's coming or going. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So I will get everybody inside here um, to bunker down, and then I'm going to explain to Terry what's going on. Okay. And how is he doing on sleep? Um, he is... Uh, he he slept during the day. All right, so he's... When he didn't know where you guys were, I mean, obviously you wouldn't call on him, and he didn't know where you were, so he yeah. just took a nap. So he's, so he's fairly rested, so he could probably stay up most of the day. Yes, he could watch over you guys. He handle any curious onlookers. All right. Okay, so I guess we're uh, hanging out here. So you can find um, a little headquarters that the cops had apparently uh, set up there. There is, um, like, there's some donuts there. There's some coffee brewing. There's a newspaper that he was reading, um, which looks like some kind of tabloid. And mm -hmm. then past that, there is a weird open space where there's basically just, like, a hole in the ground with a giant slab that at one time was probably covering it but has been moved aside now. All right, and then would the slab covered what? The hole, it's a just hole a hole in the ground. ground. And that's it. Yeah, and it's dark down there. Is it is there like a ladder to climb down? Uh yes. Okay. And Ryan, why don't you give me a wits plus Malkavian time? My new favorite role. It's four. All right. <laughs> Oh, what does right. what does Malkavian time do? It represents Lows. his uh, connection to the Malkavian Madness Network. Oh, this is going to be good. Um, if you could see the rolls. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, is it bad or good? It's something. Anyway, so you uh, mm -hmm. immediately go over to the newspaper and uh, basically start to read it, and it is. The report is Bloodless Animal Man Seized by Police by Star Reporter Scotty Cartwright for the tabloid Tell It All. And you do, do I know of him? Um, no, you do not. All right, then clearly not very famous. So basically, no one else notices this. You guys went right by, but Ryan takes it, looks at it, kind of does the classic heh, and then puts it in his jacket. Mine. <laughs> All right. All right. Hmm. All right. All right. Um, and then, uh, as soon as he's done with that, he goes into frenzy. So he oh, starts oh, screaming. <laughs> screaming. Uh, you got three ones on that roll, my friend, and no successes. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> All right. Okay. 
So yeah, he starts screaming and just like just lashes out at all of you. All right. So... If I can get eye contact, I'll try to um, dead gaze him. Okay. Um, that's charisma plus uh, intimidation, I believe. Uh, if that's the case, I like either way, same rule seven okay. specialty. This time, actually, yeah, you do uh, a lot better. It was the difficulty was eight, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, no, you still you look into his eyes and basically just hold him there, and he freezes up long enough that Terry, Terry and Steven and him. Derek can basically just restrain him. Okay. So is this like a common occurrence with this guy? Or? He has some issues, yes. So <laughs> yeah, clearly. Why? Can I get through to Ryan in any way? Yeah, it takes you, like, um, a little bit of time. But, uh, yes, you are able to basically uh, just, like, subdue him. Basically, what happens is the sun is coming up and he just falls asleep. Okay. He has so the lowest we'll humanity him, here, so. We'll get him down. Do I have time to sprinkle my sawdust around me? Yes, you can do that. Okay, I will quickly sprinkle my sawdust down in the hole. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Ryan, as you basically, you did it, you did your heh, and then immediately went into frenzy, and you also have a, a further vision as they basically pull you down into this hole. You realize this is what you saw before. This is the place. The place? Yes. The vision that you had in the elevator, this is the place. Well, so, so this is the monster. Yeah, this is where you were torn apart slowly. Needless well, to say, the realization does not take you out of frenzy. Uh, well, yeah. I'd best get uh, out of here. Yeah, um, it, you're in torpor. Basically, you're, you're struggling and resisting. They have completely subdued mm -hmm. you at this point already. But yeah, you notice as you pull him into the hole, his struggling does definitely get worse. And he seems. Oh, well, that's not good. And like in the frenzy, you just kind of get some shouts like, the place, not here, stuff like that. We don't have a lot of choice, though. No, you don't. All right, but things aren't good. I, Terry, keep an eye on us because this. I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> <sighs> All right. But I'll sprinkle my sawdust once we're down in there. Um. Yeah. So when a vampire. Drops off. Is he going to wake up in frenzy? Um. Well, it depends. I mean, you are in a completely new place, so he'll. I would give him another roll when he wakes up. Okay, but it's not necessarily if a vampire. It's not a guaranteed thing. Okay. Okay. And we're all in close contact. This is going to be fun. Yep. So. Terry's like, I will, I, I will subdue him before he wakes up. I was going to say, can we yeah. at least zip tie him yes. or something? He's like, he Terry's like, I'll handle that. Okay. So, Jonathan, are you also going down into the hole? Well, uh, what's the alternative here? Burning to death. Right, then. <laughs> <laughs> tough choice, tough choice. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like, yeah. It's less of a choice and more of an ultimatum. <laughs> ultimatum. <laughs> Pretty much. All right. So you're going down? Yeah. All right. <laughs> no, I think I, I like prefer the He asked like there was a choice. Are you going to go into the hole too? I just need him to confirm it so that when I <laughs> when I screw him over so now. The whole uh, guy. Oh. It was like hiding in the bathroom. bathroom. <laughs> All right, if you so say it, you... You can either, I can either kill you or you can do this thing. And you can't say, hi, I screwed you up by not killing you. <laughs> That's not right. the way. Right, you go down there, and immediately you get a sense through your auspex that something is wrong here. There is mm -hmm. an incredible power that has just permeated this area psychically. Um, then I will immediately inform everyone of this. So you feel very shaky, and then you feel... Um, almost like a connection with this thing like you can feel its thoughts and your thoughts becoming one um in a very very good way um and i don't think it's a good way <laughs> no i'm I, don't worry i'm it's definitely a good way 
It's almost I don't like, think so. It's almost like you have no control over yourself, like you're completely and this thing's will, in a good way. Um, and you are led over towards a small recess in the wall, and you reach into it. No, I would really like to do every single thing in my power to resist this, including spending willpower points if I can. And you pull out a vial of blood, and it has this deep color. And there's really no way I can just use willpower points to resist this? Nothing so at all? you're spending a willpower point not to drink it? Is that what you're saying? To resist this every time I can. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you basically, you find this thing, you uh, spend your willpower point... You still have this vial in your hand, and Stephen can see it as well. Um, and it is this glistening ruby red color. Can I put it back and say, don't, don't, no, don't stop? Uh, that is going to be a self control roll. All right, then. For me, that is, that's the wrong file. It's uh, five. Okay. You can choose not to drink it, but you cannot bring yourself to leave it, basically. You feel like you need to have possession of this. And actually, uh, Steven, you can see it as well, yes. So, you also need to give me a self-control roll. It's four. Okay. Alright. Um, you are... As is, Jonathan, as you're kind of regaining control of yourself, you look over at Steven and find him basically taking steps forward to grab this thing when he stops himself and kind of, you know, takes a steadying breath and kind of steps back. Okay. Um, Jonathan, I would suggest you pocket that away out of our sights. If you can want, I do that? If you want to do that, you can basically kind of wrap it up in a handkerchief and kind of put it in your pocket. Okay, I'll do that. And you Once it's out of my sight, can I get rid of it? You cannot get rid of it, no. Alright, then. Am I, you notice do also, I have my senses outside of that? Uh, yes, you've kind of regained yourself, although Steven notices you don't. But you notice that, Steve, that Jonathan kind of keeps kind of patting the pocket where it is, just kind of making sure that it's still there. He still yeah. has it, that it's all good. Obviously, he's got it's. It's essentially the One Ring, is what we've got. Yes, you guys have successfully found the One Ring. All right. All right. All right. All right. So I'm assuming we're falling. Into At this point, yeah, you guys basically I'm, pass out almost instantly. I'm afterwards. back in my circle of sawdust, and I'm good. Yep. So. Everyone takes off a blood point. I'm and fail, actually. we are going to switch back to flashback characters, and this is actually the end of the session for the main characters. Um, okay. and we'll finish okay. up with the flashback characters as well. So we end in a pit. <laughs> yep. In the pit of death. Boy, and I bet Ryan will be just thrilled to see this vial of blood as he wakes up in frenzy. Oh, my well, God. Well, he can't see it. <laughs> it's pocketed oh, away. Oh. It's pocketed away. Oh, oh, right. um, oh, can I have yelled at uh, Terry to take the vial? Well, is he going to be influenced by it? You do I not know. know. I don't know. It's I probably mean, he's... Yeah, if anything, he's probably more addicted to the Vitae yeah. than you are. <laughs> True, okay. All right, all right, we'll deal with that when the time comes. All right. So, you guys had just found a bomb. We dunked it in water. Yes. If you want to give me a... Um, uh, we'll do a intelligence plus security for this. Six. All right. And that one ready. He had that one ready. <laughs> it's like bomb. I know. <laughs> so yeah, you but check. It's possible it. it's a mechanical bomb. Yeah, you check it very carefully, and actually, you're pretty sure that this thing would not have gone off. It seems like it was shoddily made. There are explosives there, but it would not have detonated. Uh, can you kind of get that shit off my plane, please? Well, that's weird. Why Why would that have been that way? 
She takes a further look at it. Is it remote detonator, or was it supposed to be a time detonation? Um, yeah, you can check it out. It looks like it is supposed to have been set on a timer. Um, from the looks of the timer, I mean, it's still running. It would have exploded around the time you were over the Atlantic Ocean, basically. Um, the timer is still running? Yeah. It won't explode because it's not connected correctly, but the timer device okay. itself that's counting down is still active. Okay. Derek could have made a bomb better than this. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> um, um, that's weird, though. And we've checked the coffin. There's nothing else. There's nothing else. And, uh, and who came into the plane? This is a secured hangar. Yeah, it must have happened sometime during the day. I'm not liking this at all. I'm not liking this. Yeah, Loden himself is rather taken aback by this. So he says, uh, we'll be arriving during the day itself, so I want you to be extra cautious as we head to the haven that's been acquired while we're in the city. <clears throat> um, in the meantime, she's going to finish dismantling the bomb because at this altitude, it would not be a good idea to open those doors. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you all want to get sucked out. Oh, Loden would stay in there. He's strong enough. Yeah. All right. So while you're doing that, he hands over to Rourke 20 $1,000 bills and then 20 $100 bills, mm -hmm. as well as a pamphlet about an auction. He says, okay. the, you can see the auction is going to be held during the daytime. He says, this is one of the reasons why we are heading to London. It will be up to you to see to this. Obviously, okay. it is even more imperative that you be as careful as possible, given current circumstances. All right. And in the brochure, what is circled? Um, it is an item, which is a journal. It's by that Admiral. Uh, it's by the Admiral. Yeah. The most useless thing that I've ever purchased for Loden. Yay, this is going to be fun. Yes, it did say that, uh, dedicated to Rourke, who sacrificed his life to bring me a useless item. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why you're concerned. I'm going to die bringing a useless item. So I have what? How much money do I have? 23000 Uh, $21,000 bills, $2,100 bills, which should be more than enough. Um, but... 23000 and 100 isn't it? Um, yeah. So how it's, much total? It's 20,000. 22,000. 22,000, yeah. Okay, 22,000. That's what I wanted. So I know I, I know it's in $1,000 bills and $100, but I wanted a total figure. Yeah. In addition to that, you also, I mean, that should be more than enough. You also do know a number that you could call um, to get more money basically wired to you if it became okay. necessary for some reason. Okay. But I'm walking in with 2200 in cash. Uh, additionally, 22,000. 22,000. 23,000, isn't it? No, 22,000. No, it is $20,000 yeah. bills. You have 2,000 in 100s and 20,000 in 1,000s. Yes. All right. <laughs> well, that was a long discussion about math. <laughs> that was a long discussion about money. He says, right. um, additionally, uh, he says, in order to protect you, uh, I'm going to give you a small portion of my Vitae. And he stretches out his arm to you uh, to take uh, a blood point. All right. I'm extremely honored. All right. And then, uh, yeah, so you feed, you feel his Vitae enter into you, and once again it just renews to you the sense of just how great it is to work for this man. Oh, no. He is a great man. This the only man I let boss me around. You know? And actually, speaking of that, uh, since you are the security expert, he uh, calls to Natasha next and says, you will be in charge of making sure nothing happens to any of my men or myself while we are on this mission, and he then holds out his wrist to you. Yes, sir. And she'll drink. Yeah. Basically the same thing. You realize just how great it is that you get to be bossed around by a man this wonderful. Him and only him. <laughs> okay, Rourke occasionally, but... <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Rourke's just a surrogate, and he knows it. Yep. And, uh, let's see. Because to be honest, Natasha, you're just a surrogate, and you know it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Every man needs a strong right arm. Oh, and he also right. hands over to you, Rourke, uh, a phone number, and says, you will take care of the matter, this matter with the Queen's retainers. Uh, I expect to you to announce our presence in the city. Okay. It should not be too difficult. Nope, I've got the routine down. So you guys, basically, Derek brings the plane in. Why don't you give me, uh, Derek, a dexterity plus uh, piloting, just to see how cool it is when you bring this plane <laughs> no, in. Do no not botch, uh, because... No handbrake turn on the landing, please. Miles? What was that, sorry? Dex plus piloting. Ah, eight. Specialty and steady hands. All right. You sure it's Good. eight? Yeah, it should be more than that. That's your drive. It's ten. What's up? Pilot. Piloting. Piloting. It's in your other traits. Oh, that's why I can't find it. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that has its sense, specialty. This is, this is what you're good at. Steady that's what I'm really good at. In this case, although helicopters doesn't. All right. Yeah, so you bring it in nice and easy, set down, down in Heathrow, and uh, basically taxi right in. You don't even have to get one of those little uh, trucks to like bring you closer or farther away from the runway. You just... <laughs> Perfect. And the role Beautiful. also covers just how cool you sound when you say, uh, and we are now arriving in Heathrow Airport. The local time is... Whatever the hell time it is. <laughs> uh, the local time in Heathrow right now would be 22.32, I believe. So, by the I hope time you all had a pleasant ride, exactly and uh, thank you for choosing time, Derek right? Airport. It is daytime at this point. Loden has locked himself up in his trunk. Alrighty. So let's get the uh, trunk unloaded. Right. And to, I'm assuming we know where we're, what haven we're... Yeah, you've got the haven. Going. You're going to have to pass through customs first. So, okay, but I'm sure I know who the correct people are to... Um, yeah, you're, you don't have any special instructions for customs. Basically, you're just supposed to go through. But um, I was going to say, but generally, I mean, have we ever traveled with Loden before? Um, never to do London. I generally, do I generally know how customs work? You've been to other places, obviously. You know about, yeah. Right. The basic procedure. So I, I would prefer either myself or Natasha to stay with the trunk. Oh. Natasha's staying with the trunk. All right. Okay. So yeah, you're there kind of supervising uh, as basically everyone takes their bags through, their own personal bags. Okay. And um, everything's checked out. There's no weapons or anything that you guys are carrying. And uh, then there's one bag which is contains Loden's clothes. And he's checking through that. He says, so which suitcase does this belong to? Uh, it's mine as well. I see. He kind of checks through. He says, uh, clothes are a different size. I'll just stare at him. All right. So he kind of shrugs and says, uh, all right. And, uh, what's, uh, who owns that trunk? And he points to the trunk. That part of our, belongs to our party as well. Okay says, you don't have anything, you know, to declare or anything like that. You don't have any fresh fruit. No, no fresh fruit. All right. So he's kind of checking things off his list. He's like, all right, well, you should be good to go. Uh, just pop open that trunk, and I'll take a look at it. And he starts walking over to open up the trunk. And needless to say, uh, the sunlight is streaming through the windows at this point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. this is where we will to be continued with our flashback characters. All right, Seriously. Natasha. Um... Yes. <laughs> I'm throwing it out there. I was looking through some of these character sheets. Some of them have Dominate. <laughs> I was going to say, who has Dominate? We are to and... be... You guys will have to deal with this next week. This is where we are ending for today. 
Because um, if my friend, uh, who has Dominate here? That's what I'm looking at here. I think here. Uh, Julian oh, uh, has Dominate. I think, I think my friend Julian's going to take this over. I will do my best. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. So that is uh, pretty much the session. We can uh, move over to experience points then. All right, then. So, uh, why don't you guys tell me what it is that you learned, and we can start with Miles. All right, then. Uh, I learned that apparently some vampires can eat food. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, Stephen, what did you learn? Well, I learned many things. I learned, one, that Loden is actually missing, and um, we're obviously going to have to go save him. And that the sheriff is a complete and total. Okay. <laughs> and uh, David, what did you learn? Well, I learned about that place, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, what we do here at the end for the role playing thing is usually I'll set up a little uh, like role playing award where basically everyone will vote for uh, who they thought did the best role playing in the session. Um, since Gulam's here, he can participate as well. Uh, anyone in chat is free to participate, although I don't think there's anyone right now. Uh, two of yours, so no, I don't imagine. <laughs> yeah, so um, we'll go around. Um, Jonathan, you Doctor won last Strange. <laughs> Jonathan, you won last time, right? Yeah, I did. Okay, yeah, so uh, can't vote for Are we doing the Jonathan. same role if you can? No, okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, so can't vote for Jonathan. Um, can't vote for yourself. Yeah, so what was that, uh, Coolum? Dr. Steven, Stephen Strange. All right. So, Stephen... <laughs> if only I could be Dr. Strange. That would be so cool. Stephen, who are you voting for? Um, I will vote for my buddy Ryan. Okay. Do, do you have any other options? That's true, because Derek's not here, is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah so, Derek has so, to vote for each other. Yeah. Ryan has to vote for Stephen. And then, uh, Miles? I'm also giving you to Stephen. Okay, so Stephen picks up the extra experience point. So, uh, everyone gets three, except for Steven, who picks up four. Why is it lower still? Uh, I, I looked over... I'm being a little bit stingy, yeah. I looked over the experience point rules again, and, uh... Yeah, I'm being a little stingy this time. But why? Because when are we gonna bring back the, uh, the, like, the, the ice cube? Award. <laughs> you know, I was just whoever was in, that myself. Whoever was in the most frantic situation and kept their cool. <laughs> so, That'd be uh, Steven again because he had a gun pointed at his head and he didn't flinch. Yeah. No, Steven, Steven has <clears throat> many balls of courage. So, uh, since uh, this is for the YouTube audience, uh, Coolimp was nice enough to guest star with us here and possibly next week. Uh, yeah, I'm going to clear that by my wife uh, whenever she gets home from her hike today. Okay. So hopefully uh, he'll be in here next week. And he runs his own stream uh, on Friday evenings at uh, 6.30 Pacific Standard and 8.30 Central, yeah? Yep. Okay. So, yeah. Um, we won't be playing this week because um, in – I don't know if it's a twist of fate or just life messing with me – um, two of the players are making a dog delivery for my mom. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> nothing this week, um, the week that I upload this, but if you're looking down at the YouTube, uh, posted on date and it wasn't this week, then he's probably playing. Um, I tweet everything out from my, from my Twitter and my, my Facebook and all that stuff. So if you're paying attention for San Antonio after dark, you'll see it. Yeah. I'll put all the links and everything down in the description. All right. So thanks for joining with us, and uh, I'm going to end the recording now.